All right, welcome, hello, and welcome back, guys. It's another one of our Slant Alpha adventures, doing some air traffic control training on the Vatsim network. Whew, I'm gonna pre-warn you guys uh, before we get too far in. Uh, and I do wanna, yeah, hang on one second. I, I, I just wanna pre-warn you guys. Uh, Jay, John, welcome back to the stream, first of all. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but pre warn you guys that uh, there is a fly buzzing around the studio. So if we're if we're in the middle of an exercise and all of a sudden I yell like "die, bitch," and <laughs> I, I'm not I'm not talking to the planes. I'm not talking to you guys. I'm just like you know just just wanted to let you guys know. That I might actually capture that audio and make that. He's my dry. Ringtone. I'm sure someone will clip it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna make that my ringtone from now oh, on. <laughs> yeah, great. I'm pretty sure I've heard worse in training sessions. Well, That's yeah, true. fair enough. <laughs> That's true. All right. Well, welcome back, guys. For those of you uh, watching this and maybe who haven't seen this series before, we're doing some that sim air traffic control training. I am currently an S2 rated controller in the Washington ARTCC on VATSIM, which means I'm capable of, well, capable and qualified uh, on paper at least to run delivery ground and tower at, uh, at any of the airports within Washington's uh, ARTCC airspace. And uh, so what we've been doing here is a series where I've been slowly but steadily progressing toward being able to run approach and departure as well. And uh, the staff here at Washington's ARTCC has been uh, incredibly supportive of the idea of running this on the live stream, which is something that is not ordinarily streamed, but uh, they've been very supportive of the idea of using this training process to kind of show the, the VATSIM community at large or the, 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 the simulation, flight simulation community at large, what the training process entails and what an approach and departure controller, you know, kind of goes through when they're learning how to do what they do and all the considerations that, that go into how they manage their airspace. So, uh, so yeah, thank you guys. And, uh, just welcome you back individually with, uh, the air traffic manager of the Washington air TCC, Mr. Uh, Jared West. Hello and good evening. And the deputy air traffic manager. Uh, I'm going to uh, need some flyers and a uh, set of 30 weight ball <laughs> bearings. Second, what the hell you need ball bearings <laughs> it's, for? it's all ball bearings nowadays. <laughs> One of our coveted uh, stream viewers has popped into the chat and there's a, there's a sound that goes along with that. So I didn't want it to wipe out your introduction. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the deputy air traffic manager of the Washington ARTCC, Mr. Jay Bartlett. Hi, Rob. Hi. All right. Thank you, guys. And uh, and both of these guys are former training administrators of uh, of the ARTCC as well. So I uh, have done quite a bit of work with getting controllers up to speed with their responsibilities and their their duties. So, um, guys, we, uh, we, we, we had kind of a lesson plan laid out before the stream went live. And I think uh, we'll launch into that here in just a moment. But I wanted to take you uh, a real quick on a tour of the of the screen as i made some updates to my personal sector file and you can maybe see oh it's off the top of the of the screen but the name of this profile is called chs experimental so this is like a science experiment <laughs> that you're seeing in front of you bad um, scientist experiment yes in very much so but uh but what i did was i i created um flow diagrams for the the east flow at baltimore the west flow at baltimore the runway 28 flow at baltimore because each of those three have diff slightly different paths that each of the four main rnav arrivals take uh, and then in the blue are the paths that the um the dca arrivals take so I, I kind of just just the exercise of looking at that on the screen and being able to turn those off and on and if I go under um, view and diagrams, you can see I can switch it from, oh, and I took out a bunch of the diagrams. I mean, Steve, uh, not Steve, uh, Kyle has been fantastic in, as far as putting all of these little things into the sector file, but it's, it's too much to, to quickly be able to get to what you need. Um, but certainly I can switch very quickly from west flow to east flow. And you can kind of have both on and you can compare the, the paths that are taken. Um, and, then in, and, and then finally, I do have quick access to the uh, MVA diagram. So I can stop asking you, hey, is, is 20 okay there? <laughs> <laughs> you found it. Yeah, I found it. Well, I, had, I found it, but I had to move it to the top of the list because, like I said, it was kind of buried in 4,000 different uh, 
diagrams in, in the main sector file that we use. But yeah, now I've kind of prioritized the ones that are pertinent to Chesapeake. And so I can you know quickly get in there and turn that on for a second and see what I have to work with space-wise. So I, I don't know what you think of that, but um, <laughs> and probably not very really realistic as it pertains to what a uh, what an approach controller is seeing on their screen. But at least for my purposes, my my focus is you know to becoming um, fluent in being able to provide realistic air traffic control services to pilots. And then a secondary concern would be then going to a more realistic scope environment on my end. So you know, first and foremost, be able to deliver the services realistically and then worry about what's on my screen later on. So that's well, kind of the, the tack I'm taking on it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, the whole, the whole point of this is so that you understand the knowledge and get used to Jonathan, Back first start. Talking approach is just one thing said multiple thousands of different times, right? And <laughs> right, it's right. as long as you get whatever works for you, if this path, uh, go for it. I mean, uh, you will find over time that you need less and less of it. Sometimes, like me, you know, <laughs> there will be times when I go, I don't even know where this, I forget where this goes, right? So you have to look it up. <laughs> and it's okay to look up, but it's okay to re reference, able to find the information that this works for you yeah, that's the short I, of it i, mean, I yep. can't you know very good it's, well, it's I, really John, your, your i think your mic is so. starting to cut in and out a little bit so just just to let, just to let you know your microphone was cutting in and out during that oh i had, I had a whole rant and now it's gone um it, it was uh we got about two thirds of it well it's plugged in <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh Okay. Well, we'll see. We'll you know, we'll see how that goes as the night progresses. But yeah, so yeah. We, we, I, I definitely got the gist of what you were saying. And and yeah, so that was my take on it. Was, you know, um, I'm sure that these these tools, you know, not realistic as far as what a real approach controller would be working with. But you know, again, I'm sure the more I do it and the more familiar I get with the airspace, the more this will become automatic, and I won't quite need all the reminders that are currently on the screen. But um, you know, one by one, I can I can remove them and remove the crutches, right? Remove the training yeah, reels. Yeah, that's that's essentially what they are. They're just training yeah. reels for you, and, and then, time you know, they go away. Exactly, and then eventually be able to keep keep the bike balanced without crashing into the pavement. So, or the Chesapeake. Right, we can, or the Chesapeake. Yeah, on <laughs> We're going to be in the Chesapeake. <laughs> We're going to be in the Chesapeake, one way or the other. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so I will turn the program over to you, and and, and like I said uh, just a moment ago, we kind of kind of talked off stream about what might be a good lesson plan for today, um, but I will turn that over to to you guys and let you cover what you would like to cover. So, the the floor is yours. Okay. Well, Jared, do you want to go? Or yeah. So the first um, so I think the first thing we wanted to do was kind of show you what um, you know, approach controller, uh, who is a more a lot more familiar with Chesapeake will do as far as like running the flow, keeping a little bit of a tighter finals box. We want to show you how they pick up that uh, traffic and what they do with it. I think uh, I'll, from rewatching the stream last time, a lot of uh, what you were focusing on was what are they doing and where are they going? And then you were kind of looking all that up and it was just taking a lot of time and you kind of lost the scan. Yeah. Um, one of the well, things I, I agree that, with that completely. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Just, once I'm able to give each plane its instruction without having to think about it, then a lot of that time that's lost between transmissions, you know, will be, will be gained. So. Right. And as you start looking at those and you get more familiar, you know, Hey, someone's checking out on the Anthem, right? There's a few things that you need to do, right? They either need to call in descending via, or you need to tell them to descend via, tell them a runway, you know, make sure they gave you the, the ATIS or give them an altimeter and you can move on. You don't care where they're going, what they're doing, as long as they're not run, you know, going to run into anybody else, to send me the anthem and I'll come back to you, right? So it's literally, you know, two seconds. Here's what you need to know, and then as he gets a little bit closer, you know, now I'm going to look at, you know, maybe giving you vectors or or that kind of thing. Right. Um, right. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is, you know, how um, John might use, uh, you know, some of the different tools to get people. You know, n number one, ready to make the, you know, the base or the inbound turn. Um, and then number two, um, to keep them in sequence and keep them, you know, kind of tightened up on the sequence. And just see, um, pay attention to how much time he spends with the people who are just checking on and how much time he's spending with the people in the finals box and how he goes back and forth. And then the last thing is just how the flow works, right? Once you've gotten a couple airplanes and you've started a sequence, it's just saying the same things over and over again. 
Right. Yeah, indeed. And that yeah, kind of we're stuff. still still kind of struggling with the the quote unquote script. It's like, you know, I don't that the that whole spiel of of you know descend via, um, you know, bottom run altimeter, blah blah blah, and then expect such and such approach. You know, it's not automatic enough to me yet that I can just spit it out without thinking about it. Like the tower right. stuff, I can. You know, you get the point out, you get the wind, you get the, the the runway clearance, and then additional traffic if needed, and that flow just kind of comes automatically at this point where I don't think about it. It's very procedural, that, though, right? Yeah, that, right. But that that same kind of flow of oh, he's checking on. This is the, the little speech he gets. You know, doesn't quite doesn't quite compute automatically yet. So I'm still kind of reading it off the screen, as 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 it were. Gotcha. So um, I want to kind of just get started with this file because I don't want to take too much time away from you being able to work traffic here pretty quick. Sure. So I want to get in, get some traffic. Okay. On. Which which uh, server are we connected to? Because I'm not connected. We're on the Sweatbox too. On the two. Okay. Um, and if you want to just turn on quick look, um, then that way you'll be able to see John's tags. And John, if you'll prime up, uh, I'll just yeah, I guess that helps. Start us. sending you some uh, some traffic. This is, this is going to start off like just about every other file where it's a little bit slow, and then all of a sudden there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Okay. I figure we'll kind of get there and then show you a little bit of flow, and then when you're ready to tap in, you can just say, "Hey, I'm ready," and uh, we'll give you a brief, and then you can kind of. Okay. Take over from there. So that sound sounds like good. Yes. Now, how do I do the quick look? Um. Uh, when, oh, I don't have it. In, oh, never mind. I got it. It's in the button bar there. Yeah. Yeah, I found it. Where you can do that. Yep. Cool. All right. We are good. I see planes moving. Potomac Envoy 4418, 1-5000 for billet at 11. Envoy 4418, Potomac, good evening. Washington landing south. Continue to send via the deal. Altimeter at Baltimore 23013. Send via the deal landing south, 3013, Envoy 4418. Potomac Hello, Sirius 907, Charlie Charlie with the VFR request. Sirius 907, Charlie Charlie, Potomac, go ahead. Sirius 907, Charlie, Charlie, SR-22, uh, about uh, 8 north of the Westminster VOR, 5,500. Uh, looking to uh, enter and transition the Bravo to the south. Sirius uh, 7, Charlie, Charlie, to contact as uh, position is reported. Squawk 4052. 40527, Charlie, Charlie. Potomac, Wisconsin, 3873, uh, 1 2000 with Alpha. Wisconsin, 3873. Good evening, Super Potomac. Thanks for Alpha. Continue to send via the Trish, uh, Baltimore landing west. Expect the uh, ILS 33 left approach. Send via the Trish landing west 33 left, uh, Wisconsin, 3873. Sierra 7, Charlie, Charlie, cleared through the Washington class Bravo airspace. Maintain VFR at below 2500. Baltimore altimeter 3013. Okay, clear through the Charlie Adder below 2,500, starting the descent now, and uh, 30237, Charlie, Charlie. Tom McClough, American 427, 12,000. Uh, American 427, good evening, sir. Potomac approach across the Baltimore VOR at and maintain 1010,000, speed 250 knots. Baltimore altimeter 3013, Washington landing south. Baltimore at 10 and 250, landing south, American 427. I think one thing that has helped me with just been just having these diagrams up is to see how those DCA arrivals interact with the Baltimore arrivals and that that assurance that they aren't going to crash into each other, you know, just because of the way the airspace is set up. Yep, and that descend via on the Trish keeps them below the um, yeah, it keeps them DCA arrivals at or below nine there, and and then the, the DCA has them at I think eleven or twelve. I forget what it is, but because the uh, on the Clipper. Um, New York's instruction is to cross Trish at 12. Yeah, 12, that's what it was. And so as long as you are give them the descend via, I think Trish is below 10 somewhere. Yeah, it's 9 or below. There goes that fly. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> Get that bastard. <laughs> Potomac Southwest 478, Niner 1000, descending via the Raven 6 with Alpha. Southwest 478, Potomac. Good evening, sir. Thanks for Alpha. Expect the ILS 33 left approach. ILS 33 left, Southwest 478. Potomac, uh, Wisconsin 123, uh, 15000, descending via the MIDI 2 with Alpha. Wisconsin 123, good evening, sir, Potomac. Thanks for Alpha. Expect the ILS 33 left approach. Maintain speed 230 on the descent. Uh, 230 knots in the descent, Wisconsin 123. Departure list off was 3417, uh, 2700 climbing via. Oh, I push my control button to talk like it's on the frequency. Uh -huh. <laughs> Southwest 3417, good evening, sir. <laughs> Potomac departure. Radar contact, Altrix. Welcome aboard. And so, one little difference, though, is I'm doing Potomac approach. So, I actually have him all the way through, Rob. So, it's a little bit different from what you would do. Uh, but in you this case, it's fine. Yeah, I'll hand him off to DC. But in this case, I'm all of Potomac. You, gotcha. that would just be climb to your airspace ceiling. Yeah, I'm sorry. What did you give him? You give him? I didn't give him anything. Okay. Just said radar contact. Potomac low Delta seven seventy four fifteen descending via with Alpha. Delta seven seventy four. Good evening, sir. Potomac approach. Thanks for Alpha. Uh, expect the Atlas 33 left approach. Maintain speed to 220 on the descent. 220 on the descent and uh, 33 left, Delta 774. And a Potomac uh, Compass 5712 descending via the uh, Anthem 3 with Alpha. Compass 5712, good evening, sir. Potomac approach, thanks for Alpha. Expect the Atlas 33 left approach. Atlas 33 left, Compass 5712. Wisconsin 3873 for traffic and approach. Turn left heading 180. Descend and maintain 4000. 180, 4000, uh, and uh, Wisconsin 3873. Potomac Brickyard 47, uh, correction, Brickyard 3143, 16000 for skills at 12. Brickyard uh, 3143, good evening, sir. Potomac, cross the Baltimore VOR, add and maintain 10, 10,000. B250 knots, Baltimore altimeter 3013, Washington landing south. Baltimore 10 and 250, landing south, Brickyard 3143. Southwest 478, after Raven, descend and maintain 3000. After Raven, uh, descend 3000, Southwest 478. Departure, hello, red tape 55 at the 600 climbing four. Red tape 55, good evening, sir. Potomac departure, radar contest, climb maintain 900,000, maintain present heading for now. 900,000 and present heading, uh, red tape 55. When you have a second, John, what was the logic behind pulling Wisconsin off the arrival? Uh, number one, so if you want to pause it real quick. What's that VFR guy doing? Uh, we don't really know. We don't really know, right? So in my mind, I don't want to over control VFR. It's just kind of just in my brain. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. So I want to get Wisconsin down to three, and I can't do that if I don't know what that VFR guy is doing. Now I can, I can tell him remain three miles east, or mm -hmm. three miles away from the Baltimore VO at all times. Sometimes that's a little bit harder to do <laughs> on, yeah. on Sweatbox. And so usually I just let him fly whatever he wants to fly. And then I get the Wisconsin guy out of his way. Gotcha. Red tape 55, turn right heading 030. 030, red tape 55. Wisconsin 3873, descent of 18, 3000, turn right heading 220. Uh, 3000 and 220, Wisconsin 3873. Envoy 4418, descend and maintain 3000. <laughs> 3000, Envoy 4418. Got to break in my brain there for a second. <laughs>
Red tape 55, right turn, direct swan. Resume one navigation. Direct swan, red tape 55. And you can hand those guys, those guys going to DCA off. It's not a, you don't have to work them. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Parcello, exec jet uh, 616, 1.4, climbing via. Exec jet 616, good evening, sir. Good time to departure, rate of contact. Welcome aboard. Altitude checks. Southwest 3417, contact Washington 133.72. Have a good flight. Envoy 4418, contact Washington 3372. Good night. See ya. Tomacon Boy 4455 at uh, 10,000 with Alpha. Envoy 4455, good evening, sir. Potomac, thank you for Alpha. Descend via the Trish arrival, expect ILS 33 left to bridge. Send via the Trish ILS 33 left, Envoy 4455. Southwest 478, reduce speed at 210, then descend and maintain 3000. 210, then 3000, Southwest 478. And I know it's just the beginning, but do you notice how much quiet there is? <laughs> yes. That's because John Got answers them right away. <laughs> it's about to get to be a hot mess, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Flagship 4091 at 12,000 with Alpha. Flagship 4091. Hello, old friend. Uh, Potomac, good evening. Thank you for Alpha. Descend and maintain. Actually, disregard for now. Welcome back. Wisconsin 3873, descend and maintain 1,600. Turn right, heading to. Say the heading again. 240. 240 to 1,600, Wisconsin 3873. Sierra 7, Charlie Charlie, traffic from left to right is the CRJ descending through 2,000, approximately 10 miles. Looking for traffic, 7 Charlie Charlie. 7 Charlie Charlie, recommend due east for to avoid traffic. Okay, we'll fly east now, 7 Charlie Charlie. Wisconsin 3873, field is to your, I'm calling it 2 o'clock, 15 miles. Report you have in sight. Okay, we'll uh, call you back, uh, Wisconsin 3873. Departure low, southwest 2627, 3.8 for 4. Southwest 2627, good evening, sir. Potomac uh, approach. Climb and maintain 7,000 for now. 7,000 Southwest 2627. Wisconsin 123 at Jans. Cleared ILS 33 left approach. At Jans, cleared ILS 33 left, Wisconsin 123. And Wisconsin 123, reduce speed 170. 170 now, Wisconsin 123. Southwest 478, level off at 4,000, reduce speed 170, then descend and maintain 3,000. Okay, level to 4, we'll reduce to 170, then descend and maintain 3,000, Southwest 478. Delta 774, reduce speed 190. 190, Delta 774. 7 Charlie Charlie, on course. Uh, on course approved, 7 Charlie Charlie.
Johnson, 3873 field now 11 miles, 2 o'clock. I inside Wisconsin, 3873. Wisconsin, 3873, cleared visual, 33 three left approach. Clear visual approach, 33 left, Wisconsin, 3873. <laughs> wow. Southwest, 478 for traffic and spacing. Turn right, heading 100. Uh, 100 heading now, Southwest, 478. So I wanted to I wanted to just pause it real quick. So I wanted to point out one thing to you, right? Rob, mm -hmm. I tried it, right? I was like, ah, let me see if I can screw around with the speeds. You think that would have worked? With Southwest coming in ahead of Wisconsin 123? Uh huh. Yep. It would have been really, really close. It would have been very close. It's about 10 miles for Wisconsin. Southwest about... is about seven miles, and he still yeah. has to fly north. So I tried it. I gave it a shot. It didn't work. I said, screw it. I'm going to pull him off and bring him back in. Yeah. Yeah, but you're seeing that like way further out than I would have been seeing that. Well, yeah, but I've all... <laughs> <laughs> Southwest uh, 2627, climb and maintain 14,000. 14,000, 2627. Southwest 478, right turn heading 160. 160, Southwest 478. Southwest 2627, turn right heading 090. Zero nine or zero twenty six twenty seven. Wisconsin thirty eight seventy three maintain one seventy until two mile final runway one three three left clear land. One seventy until two miles and we're clear to land on three three left Wisconsin thirty eight seventy. Yeah, he's like the slowest <laughs> fucking dude <laughs> ever, man. Welcome to Vetsim. Ah, uh, definitely. American four twenty seven contact Washington thirty three seventy two. Right. See ya. Brickyard thirty one forty three contact Washington thirty three seventy two. Good night. See ya. Flagship 4091, descend and maintain 7,000. 7,000, flagship 4091. Exit jet 616, contact Washington 133.72. Good night. See ya. See ya. Southwest 478, turn left, heading 060. 060, Southwest 478. Wisconsin 123, number two behind it, uh, CRJ 200 on a about a five mile final. Are we 3 3 left, Clear Land? Clear Land on 3 3 left, Wisconsin 123. Delta 774 at Jan's cleared ILS 3 3 left approach. Clear for the ILS 3 3 left at uh, Jan's Delta 774. Southwest 26 27, contact Washington 3372. Good day. Yeah, he's like friggin' totally a beam. <laughs> I love it. I love Wisconsin. He's my buddy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed direct the numbers. Proceed exactly. <laughs> Overhead break approved. Go. There you go. Potomac Envoy 42-45-15 to Santa V the Anthem with Alpha. Envoy 42 Good evening, sir. Potomac. Thank you for off. Expect ILS 33 left approach. ILS 33 left with Envoy 42-45. Tell Southwest 1140, yes, 9,000 for uh, six on the Raven. Southwest 1140, good evening, sir. Potomac, reduce speed 230, then descend and maintain 4,000. 230, then to 4,000, Southwest 1140. Southwest 478, turn left, heading 320, join the localizer. Left to 320 and join the localizer, Southwest 478. Seven, Charlie, Charlie, you left the Bravo. Would you like uh, radar, uh, radar services? Would you like fight following? Uh, negative, seven, Charlie, Charlie. All right, uh, radio services terminus, walk and maintain VFR, have a good flight, switch advisors approved. See ya. Red tape 55, contact Philly approach, 125.65. Have a good night. And up, uh, Chesapeake, uh, Gordonsville. Uh, go ahead, Chesapeake. And handoff, uh, yep, that you, you just took uh, 12 south uh, east of Easton, 15,000. 
Yep, sorry, I was uh, cleaning my nails. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> Delta Potomac, 77. Seven, go ahead, sorry. Atomic 153, 14,500 descending via with Alpha. Atomic 153, good evening, sir. Uh, Potomac approach. Thank you for Alpha. Can you just send by the MIDI, expect ILS 33 three left approach? Send via the MIDI, uh, ILS 33 left, Potomac 153. Delta 774, number two behind an Embraer. Wind three, it's progressing two nine zero and five, runway three three left, clear land. Clear land on three three left, Delta seven seventy four. Southwest four seventy eight, you are seven miles from Jans. Maintain three thousand to establish clear ILS three three left approach. Clear ILS three three left, Southwest four seventy eight. Flagship 4091, turn left, heading 150. Vectors for approach. 150, flagship 4091. Southwest 1140, depart Jetna, heading 360. Vectors for the ILS approach. Depart Jetna, heading 360 for the ILS Southwest 1140. And Southwest 1140, descend and maintain 2000, reduce speed 190. Okay, 190, then 2000, Southwest 1140. Southwest 478, number three, following a Embraer 135 on an eight mile final runway, three through left, clear land. Clear land, uh, following company on uh, three through left, Southwest 1140. Or was that for 478? My bad. Uh, clear land on three through left, Southwest 1440. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> uh, 4455, reduce speed 190, then descend and maintain 2000. 190, then uh, 2000, envoy 4455. Southwest 1140, confirm descending, maintain 2000. Descend and maintain 2000 now, Southwest 1140. Flagship 4091, turn right heading 190. 190, flagship 4091. And Southwest 1140, maintain present heading, join the localizer. Okay, present heading, join the localizer, Southwest 1140. 2319, we have a 2319! <laughs> Huh? Intercept. Right All right, well, you want to? I. <laughs> you want to you want to pause and talk about what you what you saw first? This is gonna well, what I saw is going to be a really it? really tough act to follow. Um. <laughs> well, it is and it isn't. I mean, it's like you know, there's I made a lot of mistakes too, so it's <laughs> I'm not on a pedestal, believe me. Well, you're, 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 yeah, like I said, it's uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, it's it's impressive to watch somebody do it who knows what they're doing, but um. You know, man. Now, one thing I think that will be you, you've made a little bit easier for it, it is pause, right? Okay, I yeah. do want to show yep, you one other pause, thing yeah. that I was working on. Um, one one thing that you you know are making very easy for me tonight, if you have everybody handed off to Washington Center, is I did spend some time <laughs> figuring out what sectors are where. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that on the screen, but uh, um, yeah, there's a definitely. lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course, I know that we don't often open like every single one of these, and some of these don't really come into play, per se. But, um, but yeah, that's uh, so that's an interesting part of the puzzle that I think, you know, if everybody's being handed to center outside of Chesapeake, then I think that makes life a lot easier as far as like that's one less thing I've got to constantly be looking back and forth, um, looking back and forth for so. 
And the big one is just knowing if it go, really if it goes to Potomac, like we have it set up right now, right? So if we were on the network, John would be covering the rest of Potomac and you'd be on Chesapeake. So knowing whether or not it goes to John or it goes to center. Right. Okay. And I see, so I do see that there's Middletown uh, approach, which is, you know, north of us. And, you know, Philly is northeast of us and they're on. Which one and, is that uh, first one? Um, <laughs> it, well, mid, I'm sorry, Middletown, but it's like Harrisburg, right? Harrisburg, Harrisburg yep. yeah. I think yep. that it's, the, I think the identifier means Middletown, but. Yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's Harrisburg approach. Um, anyway, all right, and that fly is really needs to die. <laughs> um, fly. Okay. I am as ready as I'm going to be. I, I'm still, I'm, I don't know. I'm just still very intimidated by all this. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, but I'm so, ready as I'll ever be. What, um, anything else that stuck out at you that you were like, man, I should, I should use that. Well, I, that you I saw. I, I definitely, you know, heard the guys that checked on to the MIDI. I mean, John gave them a, you know, a, a speed reduction, like right out of the gate. Like didn't even, it didn't even wait for them to say hi. It's like, as soon as he finished saying his call sign, it's like, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> and that's um, important when yeah. finals box is really full, right? Yeah. Um, so, there are a couple so, things there. So like, do you know the speed restriction limits? Um, in what context? So, like, if they're above 10,000 feet, what's the slowest you can give a turbojet? Oh, uh, no, I don't know that. I don't remember okay. that. So, 250 knots if they're above 10,000 feet. Okay. Two, 230 knots, I think, if they're below. 210 if they're within is it 25 miles, John? Yeah. 25 flying miles of the airport. Yeah. And then 180 if they're within, I remember, 10, 15? Um. A lot of times with Mount Vernon, and it'll, ha I mean, it can happen anywhere, but a lot of times with Mount Vernon, like <laughs> that happens way sooner than normal. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, because there's actually a, a, like a paragraph in the 7110 for that, or as operationally advantageous. Mm -hmm. So if you need it, you can do it. But like the limits are supposed to be, right? Gotcha. 250 above 10, 230 below. Gotcha. Um, but if you're, if you don't have room for them, there's no sense in blasting them in there at 250 knots, right? Sure. Yeah, but the guys coming off the midi, you know, I, John just you know, got him down to two thirty like right away. So. Yeah, and the, and the reason for that is up until hold on, what is it? Up until midi, they can go they're two fifty, right? That's the speed that they should be at through all the way through midi. Well, to me, that's fine. I like to slow them down because that, that gives me a little bit of room to work. If they're mm -hmm. coming in at two fifty and that southwest. I mean, on the Ravens, also going fast, right? Now you have to kind of figure out, and the turns a little bit longer, and that kind of thing. So I like to slow them down. It gives me opportunity if I if I need to, I can speed them back up, or you know, resume normal speed, whatever. But it allows me to kind of have some some options there. Because the only other thing I have to tell them, if if everything works out the way it's supposed to, is that Jan's cleared out of three feet of approach. Yeah. Right. Indeed. Okay. And I, well. and I think you kind of said the key is, you know, he was looking at that stuff a lot, a lot earlier. Yeah. Well, that, that was what really impressed me was that, um, you know, he, yeah, John, you were really, um, you were playing the chessboard three or four moves ahead as far as how you were, you know, where, what your sequence plan was. And you decided, you decided pretty early on that the sequence that you were going to try with the one coming off the Raven wasn't going to work. Yep. Whereas I think I would have probably just been starting to see that he was going to need the sequence in there somewhere. You know what I mean? Like yep. I'm, st I'm still just like struggling to see that far ahead. Well, and I think that comes with time, right? And yeah. seeing it over and over again, right? And, and right. it's, it's, it will come to you eventually. And I think the, the, the fact is you saw it tonight and you, you saw what I was trying to do and it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's okay. And you just say, you know, basically turn south and I'll get you to be sequenced back in, you know, and, and that's okay. I think if you have a plan, try it. If it doesn't work out, then on to something else. And, you know, cause there's a lot of things going on. The other thing I did, if, if you don't know if you noticed, but flagship, you know, I, I, he probably, he might've, you might've gotten away with, with compass. I wasn't even going to deal with that. Fly over the bay. I'll get you back in. 
right? Yeah. Because I don't want to lower him too much because, you know, I want to keep him high and keep him out of the way because Compass, I shouldn't have to talk too much to until Mm -hmm. he's down through hook. Unless I want to bring him in sooner, right? Which is always my goal. So, you know, Envoy 4455 is going to be the moment he's a beam with Southwest 1140, he's turning in. He's going to turn on that base, right? To me, I use the assuming speeds are in a, in a normal range. Mm-hmm. When the aircraft are a beam, that's when I turn them in for the base leg. Mm-hmm. Right. That keeps my finals box tight. Gotcha. So, did you have any other questions or anything about anything that we did or talked about or? No, no questions. I'm just okay. I'm just know that I'm going to be you know not ready to keep up with this volume, but I'll do my best. Well, I mean, I think. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the hard part is coming on when there's this you know relatively amount of high amount of traffic and then giving a you know a position getting getting up in your case getting a position brief mm-hmm. you know getting all that while i'm still talking to other people it's it's fun <laughs> to say mm-hmm. the least. <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll keep it paused just for for the ease of the transition but okay uh, you know, the, very rarely will this take place like this unless I'm just going down the tubes right. pretty quickly. I may just say, just take them, <laughs> figure right, it right, out. Right, 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 right. Uh, but normally we we tend to do that when it's a little less cha- uh, chaotic. Right. Gotcha. So when you'll hear, you know, uh, you know, controller change in progress, standby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, should I turn the quick look off now or no, I guess... Uh, it's yeah, up to you. I, don't I mean, if if you want to work with it, well, uh, probably uh, and, good and idea maybe, too. Well, and then maybe just pick he, up. The he's going to hand he's going to hand those tags over to you when uh, in the brief, so you'll get them in just a minute. Okay, so hold on. So should, should I drop this? Yeah, I guess. I'm picking this up. Okay. Yeah, they're both landing. Okay. Well, then I'll collapse those. Okay. So he he's done two thousand uh, intercept the localizer. Got it. Uh, Potomac, uh, or excuse me, Envoy forty four fifty five is down to two thousand. I was going to bring him in behind eleven forty. Okay. Potomac one fifty three is down to four thousand. I have not cleared him yet for okay. from Jan's uh, no speed that I believe right no speed. Uh, Compass is down on the. Did I, I didn't, did I do a speed or no speed? No, I don't see one on here, no. Okay. Uh, Compass 5712 is uh, down on the Anthem. He's been given 3 through left. Flagship is on a heading of 190 down to 7,000. Uh, Amer- uh, Wisconsin 3755 is 10,000. Southwest, I don't think I've talked to him yet. So Southwest 706. Envoy 4245 is down on the Anthem left. Uh, tower is not on. We're in West Flow. Adis is Alpha. No weather. Any questions? Uh, no, no question. Well, all right. So there's one that looks like it's on the Raven far to the southwest. We haven't. He hasn't checked in yet. Uh, 451. It? No, he has not. Okay. Uh, and then the VFR target east of the bay. We haven't talked to him yet. I have not talked to him yet, no. Okay. All right, no questions on right, my controller. Okay. Uh... All your control. Have fun. <laughs> Here's the question. Ready? <laughs> sure. Potomac, give me Southwest 451, 900,000. Southwest 451, Potomac approach. Bottom information, alpha current, out to it, or two niner. Shoot, I don't even know. <laughs> 3013. <laughs> uh, expect, I'll expect visual runway 33 left approach. We'll expect a visual 33 left approach, uh, Wisconsin. Or right, Southwest 451, sorry. All right, so Envoy's now got to get like a 240. Yep. 
On the way, 4455, turn right heading 240. Contrary heading 240 on volume 4455. Potomac gave me Southwest 706, uh, 12,000. Information Alpha. Potomac 153, reduce speed 170 knots. Your speed, reduce speed 170, Potomac 153. See, you saw that, right? Yep. And Potomac Southwest 706, sorry for stepping on you. We're at 12,000. Uh, information Alpha. Southwest 706, Potomac Approach. Thank you for Alpha. Descend via the Trish 3 arrival. Expect visual runway 33 left approach. Expect a visual 33 left approach. Envoy 4455, turn right heading 300, intercept the three, runway 33 left localizer. We'll turn right heading 300, intercept the uh, 33 left localizer, envoy 4455. Southwest 1140, wind 290 at 5, runway 33 left, clear to land. Top of the wind, runway 33 left, clear to land, southwest 1140. Drop. Potomac, good evening, Wisconsin, 62, 10,000, information, Alpha. Cactus? Oh, sorry, Cactus, yeah. Cactus 62, Potomac, Potomac approach, descend via the Trish 3 arrival, expect ILS runway 33 left approach. 33 left approach, descend via the Trish. Potomac departure, good evening. Commute air 1211, 900,000. Commute air, I don't even see him. Uh, north Charlie Alpha. West of Baltimore. Oh, I see him. Okay. He's going to. Uh, 9,000. Where? He's going to Paleo. And okay. So what do you need to give him? Uh, is, he, is he already like direct, or he's already direct Paleo? Mm -hmm. Commuter twelve eleven, proceed direct Paleo. Resume in navigation. Yeah, I'll temper. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Baltimore altimeter three. Zero one three. Paleo three zero one three. Commuter twelve eleven. Envoy forty four fifty five. Wind two nine zero at one five. Runway three three left. Clear to land. Rapid wind. Runway three three left. Clear. Envoy forty four fifty five. Flagship forty ninety one. Turn right heading. Two four zero. Descend and maintain four thousand. Down to four thousand. Turn right heading two four zero. Flash at forty ninety one. Yeah, he's he should have gotten that way earlier. All right, and I got those two that are about to merge at Trish. Yep. Fortunately, they're separated by two thousand feet. Yep, exactly. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure why they are, but they are. But they are. <laughs> <laughs> take it when I can. take it. When yeah. It can. Um, Southwest 451, turn left, heading 360, intercept the runway 33 left localizer. I'll turn left, heading 360, intercept oh, the 33 left localizer. He's still at 6,000 feet, too. Yep. All right, yeah, I'm I'm drowning already, guys. <laughs> Can you pause it? Sure, 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 sure. Okay, so in your brain, eliminate the things that you've already done. You've given, you've talked to commute air, okay? Yep. Envoy 4245 is descending, right? What's his, is he descending on, what's he on, is he on the anthem? Envoy 4245, okay, that's the one way out of, yeah, he's on the anthem, right? Yep, okay. So you've given flagship 4091 a turn. Mm -hmm. He needs another turn and He needs another intercept. turn, but, but, but think about it in to, uh, to, work, to lessen your workload. The one yeah. that matters most, right, is Southwest 451. Yep. He's got about five miles to run to get to because what's he supposed to be at Jance? If if you're going to use Jance, 
Uh, it's supposed to be a four. Four, yeah. So yeah. it's only 2,000 feet, right? It's not the end of the world. And if you could yeah. tell him to send and maintain 3,000, if he's on that heading, he's going to intercept between Splat and Jans at 3,000. Everything's fine. Gotcha. So that one, see, because what, what happens is a lot, it happens to me too. So I, I'm speaking from experience. If you start to get behind the eight ball and you go, oh, crap, I got this and this and this, and everything starts to stack up, and then you get mm-hmm. overwhelmed and overstressed. Just start eliminating things from the necessity at the time. Southwest is the only thing that matters at that moment to set and maintain 3,000 or whatever you want to give him. Okay, Then go give flagship and then figure out where you're going to feed in compass. I don't know that you can fit in compass between 451 and 4091. That might be tight. Maybe you fly yeah. him down until he's a beam with flagship. Okay, so now you got your finals box worked out. Okay, then but what compass does out. need is to slow down. Why fly him way far away from the airport, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that then that's uh, and that's all well and good, but at the same time, it's like I I fix I figure that out in my head, and at the same time, there's three more handoffs coming in, you know, and then the VFR guy used to the bay, so it's just. I'm just, I can't keep up with the workload. And, I, and I'm sorry that I'm getting frustrated. It's just, okay. I'm just. <laughs> it's entirely just, understandable. Yeah. I'm just now, not, I'm just not at the speed yet. Okay. That's fine. Um, let's start here. If you could eliminate red tape 902, Wisconsin 2755 and two Tango Yankee. Thank you. Seven. Uh, uh, you get them already. Yep, there they go. Um, I do. We we should we probably want to see if you can work in that uh, VFR guy over the bay. Um, but if you feel like that's too much, we can delete that one too. Well, just for the purposes of uh, of just having something to show instructionally. I hate to do this, but John, could you? resume what you were doing and and you know kind of show how this sequence on the bottom end would work out uh sure yeah i can yeah. i appreciate that of course um i do forget <laughs> potomac is you cleared him for the approach right yeah potomac's been cleared for the approach but i haven't given him his landing clearance yet okay uh southwest has a turn but he needs a uh try hand these back to you john yeah if you could yeah okay what's um so what is your Oh, I got a prime sector ID. Okay. Uh, okay. One J. One J. One J. He's he's one J. Okay. Uh huh. All right. So F four one J. Okay. So he's cleared for the approach, I believe. Okay. Uh, F four one J. Uh, he's got a he's got the intercept the localizer, but he needs a descent. Okay. F four one J. Um, he needs a a turn to follow Southwest and the descent. Okay. And then F four one J. That's probably your number four. Although you might be able to jam him in ahead of flagship, since okay. he's lower and slower. Yep. Um. J. Southwest you want to keep the guys okay yeah so southwest 941 i don't even have a i don't think I've you even have talked not talked to him, to him yet, yet yeah no. yeah uh-huh. all right and then who else you want to keep the guys on the outside like what's uh, a cactus 62 southwest and envoy you want to keep them just so we clean up the finals box or do you want them just to take the whole thing uh just just take the whole thing back because okay. I, i'm just yeah I, I'm just struggling to, to remember what's what at this point. So Okay, if you want to hand them off. Uh, yeah, hang on one second. I want to drop that one up there that you deleted. Okay, you can so actually there's... just drop the track if you want. I'll pick it up. Okay. Might be easier than typing the code out. I'm still trying, trying, trying to drop that Wisconsin that's right over the airport. Okay, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I don't care about him. Okay, I think I've dropped everybody. Uh, yep.
Okay. Uh, whenever you're ready, Jared. Okay. Southwest 4, 51, descent of 18, 3,000. 3,000, Southwest 4, 51. Compass 57, 12, reduce speed 190, then descent and maintain 3000. 190, then 3000, compass 57, 12. Black ship 4091, reduce speed 210, then descent and maintain 3000. 210, then 3000, flagship 4091. And flagship 4091, turn right, heading 280. 280, flagship 4091. Southwest 706, level off at 10,000, reduce speed 250, then descend and maintain 4,000. Okay, level at 10 now, it's reduced to 250, then we'll go to 4,000, southwest 706. Southwest 451, you are one and a half miles from Jans, maintain uh, 3,000 until established, cleared ILS 33 three left approach. Cleared ILS 33 three left, southwest 451. Flashing 4091, turn right heading 310, intercept the localizer. 310, intercept the localizer, flagship 4091. Southwest 941, good evening, sir. Potomac approach. Descend and maintain 4000. 4000 now, Southwest 941. Compass 5712, turn right heading 240, vectors ILS. 240, uh, Compass 5712. Southwest 451, wind at Baltimore 290 at 5, runway 33 left, clear land. Clear land on 33 left, Southwest 451. Tell me, Brickyard 5071, 6000 for skills at uh, 12. Brickyard 5070, good evening, sir, Potomac. Cross the Baltimore VOR, add and maintain 10,000, speed 250 knots. Baltimore altimeter 3013, Wash and landing south. Landing south, uh, Baltimore 10 and 250, prepared for 5070. Flagship 4091, just south of Jans, cleared ILS 33 left approach. Cleared ILS 33 left, flagship 4091. Compass 5712, turn right, heading 300, intercept the localizer. 300, intercept the localizer, Compass 5712. Act is 62, maintain speed 210 on the descent. 210 knots in the descent, CAC is 62. Southwest 706, when you level off at 4,000, reduce speed 190. Okay, uh, four first, then 190 on the speed, Southwest 706. Southwest 941, depart Jetna, heading 360. Intercept the localizer. Depart Jetna, heading 360, intercept the localizer, Southwest 941. Southwest 451, I forget if I give it to you, wind 2905, runway 33 left, clear land. Yep, we're clear to land, Southwest 451. Flagship 491, maintain speed 170 until two mile final, runway 33 left, clear land. Clear to land on 33 left, flagship 491. Compass 5712, three miles from Jans, maintain 3000 until established, clear to ILS, 33 left approach. And uh, flagship 4091 is unable 170 till 2. We have a 99 knot uh, rep speed. Uh, resume normal approach speed. That's fine. Southwest 706, turn left, heading 135 vectors for spacing. 135, Southwest 706. Southwest 941, reduce speed 190, then descend and maintain 3000. 190, then 3000, Southwest 941. Southwest 941, Right heading zero one zero. Looks like you're still going to Ripken. Uh, zero one zero, and uh, yeah, we're uh, we didn't have a uh, Jetna, so we didn't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know why? Because I forgot. I didn't even check. I just assumed. <laughs> my FMS my just messed me up. It's all my yeah, FMS's fault. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is bad simism right there. <laughs> if that's right, never yeah. it. So how do you fix it? Uh, Southwest nine. Are you asking me or Rob? Yes. <laughs> well, just at that, uh, I just probably just get on when I get him on a heading. I point out the traffic. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Yeah, clear visual approach. Yep.
it's it's the, the other skill that you have that I don't, John, is to see that commute error and ignore him because you, you've he's he's already out of the way, you know. <laughs> it is it is he's, very difficult. He's above everybody else, but I keep getting it distracted. Is. Like, oh my gosh, what does he need? He exactly. doesn't need anything. He's not even nope. part of that line. <laughs> nope. It's hard. It's very very difficult to do. Yeah. I mean, it because especially because he's moving and it takes so long in the refresh that that big yellow dot is or yeah. the big data tag is on top of everything else too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I'm I'm still I'm still stuck in that tower mentality of, you know. Everybody on the screen is is in line for my airport, and it's, yep. it's not the case here. And I'm I'm, I'm still stuck on that. Not. Potomac Hill, Piper two two five Bravo Kilo uh, VFR request. Uh, Piper two two five Bravo Kilo. Good evening, sir. Potomac standby. Break Southwest seven zero six. Turn right, heading one nine zero zero. One nine zero Southwest seven zero six. Compass fifty seven twelve. Wind two nine zero five. Runway three three left. Clear land. Clear land. Compass fifty seven twelve. Southwest 941, turn left heading 360, intercept the localizer. 360 and intercept the localizer, Southwest 941. Cactus 62, descend and maintain 3000. 3000, Cactus 62. Envoy 4245, when you level off at 4000, reduce speed 170. Okay, 4000, the speed 170, Envoy 4245. Southwest 941, you are three and a half miles south of Splat, maintain 3000 till established clear to ILS, 33 left approach. Clear to ILS 33 left, uh, south is 941. Uh, let's see. 225 Bravo Kilo, Potomac, go ahead with your request. And uh, November 225 Bravo Kilo, Piper uh, 28, or Piper Archer, we're about 15 uh, east of Baltimore, 2500. Looking for a full stop landing at Baltimore with Alpha. Piper 225 Bravo Kilo, rate of contact position is reported, squawk 2160. Clear to the Washington class Bravo airspace. Turn the class Bravo squawk 2160 uh, to 5 Bravo Kilo. Cactus 62, turn right heading 240 Vector Xylus. 240 Cactus 62. Southwest 941, number 2, behind an Embraer 170 on a 2 mile final, wind 2905, runway 3 through left, clear land. Clear land on 3 through left, Southwest 941. Yeah, that commuter is just in there to get to make you think that, to get in your way. Yeah, he's, he's, you've you've done a good job setting that up. That's perfect. <laughs> Steve, Potomac, uh, Southwest 152, 9,000, descending to the Raven 6 Alpha. Definitely a Steve. Um, who are you? Who just called me? Southwest Sorry. 152. Southwest 152, Potomac, good evening. Uh, expect uh, ILS 33 left approach. Thanks for Alpha. 33 left. Southwest 44, Potomac, you with me? Southwest 44, I'm here at 11,000. Uh, depart Westminster 150, Vector Xylus, 33 left approach. Westminster heading 150, south is 44. Cactus 62, turn right heading 300, intercept the localizer. 300, intercept the localizer, Cactus 62. Southwest 706, descend and maintain 2000, turn right heading 260. 2000 and uh, heading 260, south of 706. Uh, Piper 225, Bravo Kilo, C direct to the field, into a right base, runway 33 right. Altimeter, Baltimore 3011. Direct to Baltimore, enter a right base for 33 right, 5 Bravo Kilo. Southwest, 150, Southwest 152, when you level off at 6,000, reduce speed 190. Turn right, heading 070, vectors for spacing. 070, we're slowing to 190 now, Southwest 152. Potomac, uh, United 807 at 12,000 with uh, Alpha. United 807, good evening, sir. Potomac, continue to send via the Trish. Uh, Baltimore, altimeter 3011, expect dollars, 3 through left approach. I may have fat fingered Southwest 44. Yeah, Southwest I was going to say, where's, he, where's 44 going? <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Cactus 62. Clear to ILS, 3 through left approach. See, uh, cleared ILS through the left cactus 62. It was on a heading of 15, not 150. <laughs> <laughs> well, that explains it. My FMS again. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly.
Hey, Potomac, how you doing? Southwest 1147, 1-5000 to send a view with Alpha. Uh, for S 1147, good evening, sir. Potomac approach. It is information, Alpha. Thank you for that. Uh, except with dollars, 3 3 left approach. 3 3 left, Southwest 1147. Brickyard 5070, contact uh, uh, Washington Center 133.72. Good night. See ya. Southwest 706, turn right, heading 300, intercept the localizer. Right to 300 and intercept, Southwest 706. Southwest 152, descend and maintain 3000, reduce speed 190. Okay, we're slowing to 190 already, down to 3000 now, Southwest 152. Cactus 62, wind in Baltimore 2304, runway 23 left, clear land. Clear land 33 left, Cactus 62. Southwest 706, you are five and a half miles south of Splat. Maintain 2,000 till established. Clear to ls 33 left approach. Clear to ls 33 left south of 706. Envoy 4245, turn right heading 240. Vector ILS. Right to 240, Envoy 4245. Southwest 152, turn left heading 360. 360, Southwest 152. Potomac AC 20, uh, 8223 and 900,000 descending via the Raven with Alpha. AC 2223, good evening, sir. Potomac, reduce speed 190, then descend and maintain 4000. Speed 190, then 4000, AC 8223. Meteor 1211, contact uh, Philly Approach 125.65. Good night. See ya. Envoy 4245, turn right heading 300, intercept the localizer. Turn right to. I'm sorry, 300? 300, intercept the localizer. Southwest 152 vectors through the localizer. Roger. Potomac approach. Southwest 44, descend and maintain 7,000. 7,000, Southwest 44. If you have a second, what was the yep. reason for the instruction for 152 going through the localizer? Uh, I mean, it's it's he's <laughs> far enough out that he may not even have it, but yeah. if he's got it and he accidentally clicked loc, right, or whatever mm -hmm. to intercept the it, finger and, good. and in, that's how that's why I do it. I'm sure there's probably some other real world reason for it, but on Vat Sim, I have found if you don't say that, sometimes they still leave that loc ticked and. Yeah. There you go, because I don't want him to well, just yet. I guess my question was, why not just have him join the localizer? Because I want to give just a little bit more space between 42, 45, and 152. Gotcha, okay. Gotcha, I understand. Yeah, and yet they do do that in the real world, too. They'll tell you if you're going through the loop, because they don't want you to... Oh, yeah, that, right. Oh, I no, forgot about that, you. That much yeah. I get, that the, the reason for telling them that, that they're going to cross through it is just so that they're not thinking that they missed something. Um, right. But yeah, no, I was wondering why not just have him join there, but I see what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, let's turn. Southwest yeah. 152, turn left, heading 310, intercept the localizer. 310, intercept the localizer, Southwest 152. Southwest 706, wind at Baltimore, 2304, we're on 333 left, clear land. Clear land on 33 left, Southwest 706. Uh, Piper 5, Bravo, Kilo, wind at Baltimore, 2304, runway 33 right, clear land. Clear land on 33 right, 225, Bravo, Kilo. Envoy 4245, four and a half miles south of Splat. Uh, oh, crap. Maintain 4000 till South Splat. Cleared ILS 33 left approach. <laughs> Cleared ILS 33 left Envoy 4245. There you go. I messed up there, Rob. Didn't matter. Well, they're doing different speed. They're doing different speed. And he, he may be able to. It's Sweatbox, so he probably can get it. And chances are he can still get it. If he is too high, the other thing that I would do is you have the field in sight. Yep. Okay, great. <laughs> Clear visual, visual approach. approach. Yeah. Right. And you, you, you're still five miles in trail. I mean, what can you do within 10 miles? Remember what the SOP says? What's the lowest you can go to? Uh, I'm sorry, 10, yes, uh, 10 miles, I think it's just like what you said, 170? Or no, no, um, uh, separation, lateral separation. Oh, uh, uh, is it three? Actually, slightly less. But yeah. Oh, is it really? Yeah, two so within half? 10 miles on the final approach course, you can go with uh, down to two and a half mile separation. Mm -hmm. I didn't remember that. 
Southwest 152, you're five. Well, we'll call you from Jan. Southwest uh, 152, you're one mile south uh, north of Jan's. Maintain 3000 till established. Clear to ILS 33 left approach. Clear to ILS 33 left, Southwest 152. Oh, you can do that. You can give them a, a path. You can give uh, the position reference to something they've passed already. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, cause it's still. It's still doesn't within, matter. It's just the position. Yeah, because it's charted at some point. You know, if he knows where. I don't know. Actually, Jared, I don't know. Was it? I forget. I think it's legal, but I try to give them whatever's in front of them. Yeah. Because otherwise, you're just going to confuse them. Right. If it's not on their nav display, they're like, what? <laughs> right. Envoy 4245, wind at Baltimore 2304, runway 33 left, clear land. Clear land 33 left, Envoy 4245. Southwest 152, wind at Baltimore 2304, traffic following is an Embraer 145 and a six mile final runway 32 left, clear land. Clear land on 32 left, following the slow guy, Southwest 152. Southwest 44, turn right, heading 190, descend and maintain 4000. 190, 4000, Southwest 44. AC 8223, depart Raven, heading 360 vectors, ILS, uh, correction, ILS. After Raven flight heading 360, AC 8223. It's pretty much the end of the file anyway, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I noticed there were no more handoffs coming in. Uh-uh. Yeah. Give me a pause here. Y yeah, you might as well. Um. So the the takeaway is um, there's just still too much that I have to stop and think about before every instruction. You know, John, you're um, you're demonstrating wonderfully like how this stuff becomes second nature, and you don't need to think about it. Um, the, but the key takeaway is like every plane that comes in, like I have to stop and think. Okay, what is he doing? What's the instruction? What does he get? What's the sequence of instructions? And then, and then I can pause and go like, okay, how am I fitting him into the puzzle? But by that point, the puzzles, you know, the, the windows passed for me to, to enact it. And the next plane is already checking in. So it's just, it's just, uh, I don't know if it's practice with, um, yes. watching someone else's <laughs> scope and, and just practicing saying it along, you know what I mean? Or what, what I can do to get those, those phrases out more quickly so that I'm not you know, wasting so much time thinking about what I'm supposed to say. But, uh, but yeah, certainly that's, you know, kind of the big, the big stumbling block is I'm just, I'm just not fast enough to, to keep up with these files. So, so the reason we wanted to show you this was right, because that is the hard part is translating yeah. into words, what you need them to do. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like um, I can visualize it. Like everything that John right. did, I was totally following along with. Right. Um, and I was it's, all, I was getting to the point where, I was looking at the correct airplane for the one he was going to call next. So I feel like at least, and I wasn't really able to articulate that without, you know, stop stepping all over the, the, you're, you're all, uh, to, you know, uh, back and forth, but at least I got to the point where I'm like, okay, he, he needs to call that one next. And he did. And then I'm like looking at the scope and it's like, Oh, this guy needs a descent. Okay. He got it. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm starting to get the idea, but it's just, I'm just not quick enough to get it out there. And that was the point of doing this was, uh, we want you to start seeing and feeling how the flow is supposed to work. Yeah. Because that's the number one thing is, right, getting the plan. And now right. that you kind of have have the plan in, in your mind and you and John are thinking the same things. And, I, you know, yeah, I, I'm following along with you guys because half the time I already had the plane's call sign typed in. You know, as yeah, exactly. Given, you know, before you, he's given you the, anticipate the instruction. That. And, and of course, mm -hmm. I, I assume you guys, you know, kind of. And I'm even at the point now where I'm starting to see the same planes. Like I know that this is these files are all kind of similar, <laughs> or they or are. you've run the same yeah. file a couple times with me. So, like I'm getting the flow of like okay, I I kind of know what's going to come next because I know that okay in this scenario last time this is when, um you know the guy comes up on the on the Raven or whatever. Yeah. But, but don't uh, rely on that too much because guess what the OTS file is nothing like this. Nothing like it, right? Yeah, no, no. Exactly. Uh, all completely different planes <laughs> in a different yes. order. Well, and that's a good though. Right? Yes, well, that's good. That's that's a yeah. good thing. Um, um, yeah. So at least that's the, the next idea. thing is to work on getting your plan from your mind and getting the planes. You know, like yeah. I said at the beginning, ready to take the next instruction and then doing what you need them to do. Indeed. Without indeed. micromanaging it, right? Right. 
and and the the key point from you know several lessons ago at this point that's kind of come up again is efficiency don't give them three instructions when you can do it in two don't give them two instructions when you can do it in one and again it's just like i'm not yet at that point where i'm thinking that far enough ahead so uh, again it's going to take i think watching this one back and uh you know and and maybe just practice saying it along like you know what I mean? Like watch it back three or four times and practice saying the instructions along with John and getting up to that speed where it's just tripping off my tongue automatically and I'm not having to stop and think about it every time. So, so definitely some th things for me to work on. A lot of the puzzle happens, you know, right there in the finals box. Yeah. So if you can kind of get the rest of it worked in, yeah, I mean, you can't forget about it cause you have to keep that in your scan. Make sure nobody's yeah. running. You caught those, uh, those two that were both on the, uh, you know, on the Trish. If you'd have let them descending via, let them stay on the trish descending via, you know, eventually they'd have gotten to fins and, and yeah, 4,000 right. and, and create a problem, right? So, yeah, you know, recognizing the problem ahead of time is, is a big deal. And so you've got that right. down. And now, you know, just figuring out, hey, what can I do to fix it where I don't have to watch the fix? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I well, and that's the other thing. Work. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Just give them a heading. And that's the other thing that I've realized um, that I've been reluctant to do. And that is, you know, John's very quick when, when he sees those situations developing, just freaking get him the heading away from, you know, away, just, just, yep. you know, one, five, zero, get out of my way. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> yep. it, man. And I, like, a one, yeah. One, five, zero, enjoy your tour of the Eastern shore. I'll come back to you later. <laughs> exactly. you know? Did you see how he used that airspace a few times for those players yeah. that weren't going to fit in? Right. He's like, you yeah, go over here just, and when yeah, I have exactly. a spot for you, then you <laughs> right. can come back. You know what I mean? Go sit yeah, the exactly. For a Centerville's <laughs> beautiful this time of year. We'll talk to you in a little bit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fly well, over I mean, okay, Rob's if, house if, a few times. Exactly. Fly over and buzz the Rob's house. I mean, it, you think about it, right? I mean, you got a lot of slant whiskey guys that come in they don't they can't do any of the arrivals whatever blah 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 and that's great well you know just i don't i'm not gonna let you jack up my my flow so you're gonna yeah. go take a little tour and i'll bring yeah. you back in yeah so i think and and you know as much as i've spent probably too many hours crafting these beautiful purple lines that i'm now watching these guys track along i've now trained myself that they have to follow those purple lines and i think that's the beauty of like thinking ahead and using all your tools is like, Hey, just, you know, sometimes you just break them off a, a lot of times. Like it's, it's almost, it's almost like I need to start forcing myself. What options do I have besides letting him follow this, this purple line? Well, and, and you and can't it's... put everybody on vectors, right? Or you end up. No, yeah. Yourself. But <laughs> right. Like, but, but like, but it's, so but it's an option that, that it's something that uh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll let you finish your thought. Yeah. But, go ahead. Um, but it's it's something that John was very quick to pull the trigger on when it was very useful, and I I did find myself surprised by those things like oh wow that's wow that's a, a lot easier than what I was planning on doing with him you know so yep. so good what I was going to say is go at ahead. the very beginning he had in his uh, in his plan right he knew that that envoy that he put on a real short right base right um, he knew that he was going to need to either get him in real early or he was going to go all the way in the back of the line yeah. And so he made that choice, you know, way up front is, hey, let's send him direct to the airport to send now or, you know, direct to the right base or whatever. Put him on that heading yeah. to send now. Worst case scenario, they both get there at the same time and he has to vector him on a little bit of a downwind. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. But that he was he had his plan ahead of time and he was making moves to make that happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and that's, but, uh, that's and a lot of those lines. I mean, it's it's kind of the same thing with the the Raven and the MIDI, right? Because they, you know, they're they're going to merge at, at Jans effectively, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's nothing wrong with sending the guy east if you try it. You're like, okay, I think this is going to work. I can bring him up. He can turn north and head start heading north first before those guys come through on the MIDI. Sometimes it doesn't happen. That first plan with Southwest, whatever it was, it didn't work. So I yeah. tried it and said, nah, it's not going to work. Yeah, Turn him yeah. around, but again, back the... down. The second time I did it, I purposely sent the guy to the east, right? Because I said, I'm not doing that again. And that's okay, right? In mm -hmm. my brain, I was like, nah, I tried it once, I'm done. It's okay to, to, to just say, screw it. I'm going to have a different flow when I've got two guys that are going to merge yeah. through Jane. Yeah. Now, uh, by the same token, though, you don't want to do that to yourself every time because no, you that's don't. when your final starts getting, you know, down towards Patuxent. And... 
Exactly. Right. Well, because the other thing that I did, that last one, that last sequence, I don't, I forget the call signs, but there was one guy that I effectively flew over the other one, and I had turned him towards the finals. It was a guy mm-hmm. that Southwest whatever. He was at 2,000, and the envoy was at, like, whatever it was, 4,000 or whatever he was. Yeah. So I I turned the, the trailing aircraft right after that Southwest, uh, you know, flew under him. And that's how you do those little things to keep your finals yeah. box as tight as you can get it. And that's another another one. Like I'm just, uh, what was the what was the movie? I, oh, I guess it's a Back to the Future quote. Marty, you're not thinking fourth dimensionally. <laughs> I'm not thinking three dimensionally. I'm still thinking, yep. you know, this is all on a flat chessboard. And, uh, it's, and well, don't yeah, let it's the dots touch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very good. So do we have? Is there value, Jared, in going into some of the theory behind the satellite ops? Or, um, I mean, or is... I think so. I don't know if we've melted your brain like we did the last couple of times this time. Well, we so didn't melt f- it as much because I let John like do it for me. It. Yeah, so. well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> did, Not my was brain. there value in watching John do that? Do you think that was yes, a good exercise? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Um, absolutely. Now, it did, de- it did demonstrate to me how far I need to come before I'm ready to run this file. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, there, it was definitely like the concept of watching John, you know, stack the planes in and the different tools that he used, you know, the kind of, that we just, we, we just touched there, you know, letting them fly over and then vectoring them back in or, or just, you know, banging them off the, uh, arrival just to get them on a heading and get them out of the way and work them in later. Those are all, you know, really good tools that like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have to approach those things the same way. And, you know, that was, there was a couple of aha moments that. Um, that uh, that you know, we we kind of get got to experience there because you know John did those things that were, were second nature to him, but that I would have like struggled to see as as a solution. You know, and he only used some of the tools. Like um, right. John and I have, are very different in our styles. So I'm sure we learn mm-hmm. from different people, but you know, he was doing a lot of fly this heading, intercept the localizer. Lots of people like to do that. I'm not one of those. I don't usually do that unless like I'm just trying to use it to give you the visual. You know, right. I'm a lot more. I'll give you know turn left, direct jans, cross jans at three thousand, cleared ILS three three left. Mm-hmm. Um, or, you know, I'll give the full on PTAC when I'm giving the, giving them the term turn with yeah. the, uh, the localizer, you know, instead of intercept, I'll just give you the PTAC and be done with it. Yeah. Um, and for me, I've already kind of figured out like just, you know, my, the way my brain is working, is like, if they're on the MIDI, they're pretty much just, I'm just going to bang them straight in, into Jans. And then the guys that are coming off the Raven, I kind of will work in among them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like. That's that's just for me. Like everybody's coming off the MIDI is going you know, is going straight in, and then I you know I'll I'll, I'll sequence the Raven to that you know because because that lowers your workload because now yeah, all the people exactly. on the MIDI you don't have to really screw with yeah them, I just you know I, I mean? just give them the after at jams cleared ILS boom done you know and then the Raven guys I can vector them and you know and and speed them up slow them down as needed or whatever so yep exactly um so it's just you know a, a style thing but also using the best tool. I know I've right. said that a bunch of times. So yeah, efficiency, right? Mm-hmm. What's what's the fewest number of instructions you can give? Right. Okay. Well, so let's let's talk about the um, satellite ops. And should we leave the sc- the screen connected as it is, or yeah, I'll, I'll, can't, will I? Yeah, what's do. We'll be able to zoom around and show on the screen what you're talking about, or sure. Okay. Uh, so let's. Uh, you want to do departures or arrivals first? Let's do departures first. It's easy. Uh, you've done these on your stream. You've you've done satellite departure fields. Uh, as from the pilot standpoint, yes. from the pilot standpoint, talk me yes. through how that works. What options do you have as a pilot? Well, so what what, what are we talking about? Like t- picking up from the, um, like I'm taxiing out. I'm ready to go. Or sure. I mean, what options do you have to get your clearance? Um, well, so there's the the two main ones would be to get your IFR clearance on the ground prior to taxiing out. Uh, okay. And then the other one would be to uh, you know have your your IFR and you know depart VFR if weather conditions permit, and then you know call up once you're airborne. Right. And in the real world, they have a couple other options. They can call one eight hundred WX brief, and they can actually get their IFR clearance from flight service. Okay. Um, they can call up flight service on the radio because like sometimes on the ground, approach can't hear you at some of these satellite airports, so they'll call up flight right. service on the ground either on the phone or on the radio and, and get the, the clearance so they can get that also. But what do you need as a pilot to depart an uncontrolled field IFR? Uh, what do you need? Um, what do you need sure. from ATC besides the clearance? Uh, we need a re- release. That's the word you're release. looking for. 
Yep. yep. Um, and the same thing at class deltas, right? So class delta has a tower, but they don't have automatic releases, right? So every yep. time you call and get your IFR clearance from a class delta tower, as soon as you start taxiing, he's doing the same thing you would have done as the pilot. He's calling up approach going, hey, 225 Bravo Kilo wants to depart 15 at Manassas, right? And he's going to say release for departure, right? Right. Um, and so you, as the pilot in an uncontrolled field, just have to do the same thing. Or you call up approach, hey, I'm ready for departure, or get your clearance. Maybe he might release you right then. Um, but you need right. that release, right? Right. You so, get a release window, or you get the you know call you know call me short, down the mm -hmm. runway. Yeah. Um, I'll do I'll do a mixture of both usually when I'm given mm -hmm. the release. So like if I'm bored or they're on center and they're in the middle of nowhere, South Carolina, North Carolina, somewhere or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I have no airplanes in a hundred miles. I could care less if you depart. You know what I mean? Right. Sure. Yeah, your exactly. airspace is protected, right? That's really what you need to do when you give the releases. You're protecting the airspace around their departure corridor, right? Right. Okay. Got it. Um, so that's why they have to call you so that you can make sure you're protecting that airspace. Well, if there's no okay. one there, then I'm just going to give you, hey, release, call me airborne, you know, okay. 15 minute release window. I don't, you, you know, still have, start up your run up. I don't care. Do you still have the paused screen in front of you with the targets as they are? I do. What would be a good example of that here? Like someone's um, departing Frederick. You know, you got Southwest over top of them. So Frederick's not your airport. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> right, that's um, that's uh, Shenandoah's. But they actually, um, actually, no, that is your airport. You have to call Shenandoah for a release, uh, um, because if they fly westbound. But it is your airport. So, um, and I'm sorry, what was the question? What what was their departure corridor? Um, yeah, so kind of what would the considerations be of what, you know, what airspace you're looking at as far as, you know, before you, before you're issuing the release or before San Andoa is getting the release. Okay. So um, what, um, okay. what runway are they going to use? Uh, Do you well, care? What, uh, I guess not really. I mean, it's, you know, mostly West and, you know, kind of Northwest winds right now. So right. presuming he's taking off to the Northwest. I mean, it's uncontrolled. If the pilot took off to the South East, would it, do you care? Not, no, not really. <laughs> can, can he? If he wants to. It, well, if it's right. non-towered, yeah, right? I mean, it's it's so, towered, but it's are we, are we talking about it being towered? Frederick is towered. Um, yeah, so if it's non-towered. So like, um, do like Carroll County, right? We know that okay. one's not, not towered, gotcha. right? Yeah, that's up here so, north of Westminster. Yeah. We don't even have an airport diagram because we sure as heck don't care what they do on the, on, on the ground, right? Right. Yeah, we got a little green mark on the screen. <laughs> so there's a couple options when you give them the IFR <laughs> clearance. Yeah, a couple green marks. Yep, it's right there. Yeah, <laughs> um, the, the I know where it is. I've been there. <laughs> yep, there you go. Um, so that one is, right, you have a couple options when you give them the clearance, right? You can give them cleared to Philadelphia Airport as filed, right? What does that mean to the pilot? Um, basically, wheels up, resume on navigation. Yeah, so a after you've climbed to a safe altitude, you can go direct to your first fix and mm -hmm. resume on navigation, right? Right. Um, you also can give them in their clearance, you know, clear to the Philadelphia airport via enter controlled airspace heading three, six, zero radar vectors, Westminster, Venice filed. Gotcha. Right. So even if they took off South, they're going to mm -hmm. make a turn. They're going to fly heading three, six, zero, and they're going to call you on that. So you you pretty much define your departure window for them. Right. Okay. And so if you know where that first fix is. You know, I go to with as filed a lot because, again, I usually don't care unless it's you know Leesburg and they're going southeast. And it's going to point them straight at Dulles <laughs> right, or yeah. something, right? Then we're not going to do that. So, right, um, that just depends on the airport. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, knowing where that is, and then when they call up on that heading three six zero and they're waiting for their vectors to Westminster, how does that process work? Um, well, you got to radar identify them first, right? Right, um, because you don't have them coming off of an air uh, runway at a towered field, right? Which is yeah, one of your ways to radar identify people. So yeah, so um, it's um, they're, they're already going to be squawking. Um, they're already mm -hmm. going to be squawking the code that they that they were assigned in their clearance. Um, so uh, when they call you, they should call with a position, right? Um, or, sure, you know, two miles north of Carroll County at three one thousand three hundred or whatever. So any of the, I mean, any of the, you know, the radar identification processes would work or, you know, squawk ident or, um, you know, or whatever you'd like them to do. And then, you know, radar contact. Um, My go-to is frequently ident because all pilots know how to do that. They're used to hearing yeah. it from us and yeah. it makes your life a little bit easier, you know? Yep. Um, so, the, so yeah. Right. Go ahead. 
Um, yeah, so that's radar contacts, you know, five miles north of the airport or whatever it is. Um, and then it's, uh, well, yeah, and then it's, you know, turn left heading 180, proceed direct Westminster, resume on navigation. Yep, pretty much. Um, and, and give them a climb, right? So, uh, yeah, right. When could you turn them? Uh, well, when I see this is when I have to pull up my MVA. Yep. So they, they would, they need to be above the MVA before you give them any turns, right? Yep. Okay. So we're talking, if we're talking to Carroll County, then they got to be the 2400 before I can turn them. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, so those are pretty easy, right? If you have, um, have you heard of the one in one out rule? Yes, yes. So that so means that mean? um, uh, that means that uh, IFR operations. Um, if you have an IFR departure that you have released, that means you can't clear anybody else for an approach to that same airport, or you can't you can't clear multiple, you can't release multiple aircraft from the same uncontrolled airport, and you can't have anybody on approach to that airport if there's someone released for uh, departure there. So one IFR person. operation at a time, pretty yeah, much, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have, uh, so you can't release, yeah, like I said, two, like you said, two people at the same time, you can't have anybody else on. So um, if you're kind of busy to that airport, which, I mean, maybe it could happen, um, then that's when I would go with a shorter release window right? right and that's when you're going to hear stuff from me like you know report number one uh short of the active and ready for departure right because right. maybe i have someone that i'm about that is on, you know on their way to carroll county and i don't know if you're going to be ready first or he's going to be ready first right and if i give you a 20 minute window and then you take your sweet time to get to the runway then maybe <laughs> i'm having to hold that guy for 15 minutes when i could have right. given him you know now you've already switched to advisory and i could have already given him you know his approach clearance right and, right. and kind of vice versa right i usually won't uh, give someone, you know, clear someone for an approach until they're pretty close to the airport, especially if I know I have someone on the field that's, you know, taking their time to get to the runway, because if I can get you out first, then, you know, then I will. So at what point do you, can you, uh, clear some, like if say I, we release that guy to Philly, when mm -hmm. could you clear someone for the approach into Carroll County? Um, once pro I guess once he's radar identified as, as having left the airport. Yep, exactly. Once you know who he is and he's and he's yeah. clear, and you can provide the three mile separation for him, yeah. right? Gotcha. Um, and then you can clear him back in. So, yeah. Um, the way that sounds, right, is a little bit different. So when you give him the clearance, right, it would be, you know, two two five Bravo Kilo clear to the Philly airport via fly heading three six zero radar vectors Westminster. Then is filed. Maintain three thousand five thousand whatever you want. Um, expect six thousand and ten. Squawk one two three four. Then when they get the release, right, or they read it back, yep. you either have the opportunity to say, you know, read back correct, hold for release, right. or read back correct, release for departure. And then you have to give them a window. So in the real world, I've heard a lot of uh, release for departure, clearance void, if not off in five minutes, if not off in five minutes, advises frequency no later than 10 <laughs> minutes from now, right? Because they don't right. want to look at the clock and they're kind of taking a shortcut. You, yeah. A lot of times if they're doing it 100% the right way, they're giving you the times, right? So right. You yeah, get release in for the void if not off by zero one four five. If, if right. not off by zero one four five, Zulu uh, advise me this frequency is uh, no later than zero one five zero of intentions. Yeah, or I say report intentions, but you know, same thing. Yeah. Um, yep, exactly. Um, yeah. And then that, and then that way, they know, hey, I have to be off in five minutes or not. And if not, then we know <laughs> they're going to call you, right? Right. Um, so it just yeah. kind of sets that time limit, so you're not waiting for forty five minutes for them to, to take off. Right. <laughs> right. Um, expect further clearance whenever I can get a hold of this guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. And uh, when you get to some satellite operations, um, even on the sweat box in the in the um, on the live network, right? Sometimes there's group flights that go to some airport you've never heard, of, Tangier Island or something. You know, some airport <laughs> you've never heard of before, and you're like, you know, let me give you some delay vectors till your buddy can get on the ground and cancel IFR. You yeah, know what I mean, so yeah, um, exactly. it's a little bit different. Do you want to do departures, John? No, he was sleeping. Is John still there? I'm sorry, I was on mute. What did you, what did you ask me? I'm sorry. <laughs> do you want to do departures? <laughs> uh, sure. Okay. 
All you. Uh, how do you want to do it, though? Just talk about it. Oh, you mean you want, you want me to talk about it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, no, I have the movie announcer keep... voice. No, I don't yeah, mind. That's okay. Do you mind doing it? Okay. So, um, departures are a little bit different, or uh, arrivals are a little bit different, right? So, um, you know, we were already kind of going there. Once you clear them for the approach, mm -hmm. you can keep them with you until, you know, eventually they're going to need to go to Unicom, right? Right, yeah. Uh, and so that one's a little bit of a different uh, different handoff as well, right? So, right. you know how no that one sounds? No traffic observed between you and the field. Um, rep yeah, report... Uh, Report IFR cancellation on the ground or uh, uh, what's what, in the air or on the ground. This frequency, frequency change with advisory is approved. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty much. Did I miss one? Did I miss a part? I'm trying to. Th I'm trying to think. Yeah. So I usually, <laughs> I usually um, shorten it up. So no traffic observed between you and the field. Report IFR cancellation or misapproaches frequency frequency change approved. You can. Um, uh, I think you can say the the frequency or whatever again, but frequency change to Unicom approved. Right. What did I miss, John? <laughs> uh, that's it. No, you got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It just doesn't seem like enough. It I know, seem like enough but Jared and I both were like, no, there's a piece there missing. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no. It's because it's the missed approach. Blah blah blah. It's the you know, radio service is terminated. Um, which advisor approved. So if they land and they don't call you to cancel IFR. Do you know how long in the real world they're supposed to keep your flight plan open? Oh, no, I don't know the answer to that. I think it's an hour. <laughs> and then after that, they're supposed to call search and rescue. Right. Um, it might be a half an hour. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's an hour. Um, if that <laughs> were to happen, right, now you've got, you may have other planes in a hold for an hour, mm. you know, waiting to, to land. Right. Because, you know, some jack wagon turned off the the batteries <laughs> on his plane and forgot to cancel IFR, you know? Um, right. And, and it's happened, like, I've actually heard, you know, an airline pilot complain about that before. You know, Envoy would cancel IFR in the air. We had we had to divert. We ran out of gas. <laughs> you know, it's like, jeez. Okay. You know, <laughs> that, that can mess you up. Uh, that can mess you up pretty good. Yeah. So some ways you can, if you have already have an operation at an airport, you can do a couple of things, right? Um, you can give, you know, the second airplane uh, vectors for delay, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can give them a hold. Right. Uh, pull up Whiskey 29. That should be one of your favorite airports, right? Oh, I know exactly where that is. Right over there by, I, uh, right over there love by, to fly by Paleo. Into. Yep. Yeah. One that but, I'd love to fly into real world. Oh, my God, right? Like, that would be yeah. perfect. Yep. So if you look at the RNAV uh, for 2.9, right? Oh, let me get the charts up in front of me. Okay. I didn't know if that's that's what you meant. Oh, yeah, my bad. <laughs> I'm looking at it on the scope, and I'm like, yeah, hey, what about it? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Another line. <laughs> yep. Gotcha. Okay, so okay. you have a couple of planes going in. Uh, where, where, uh, or What would you do with the number two plane while you wait? You didn't want to give him. If you wanted to give him a hold. Well, the uh, hold as published at uh, at Zachley. Expect further clearance at blank blank Zulu. Yep. So, a um, couple of things when you give the holding clearance, we're going to go over satellite operations and holds all at the same time. What's the first thing you have to change when you're going to give someone a hold? The first thing you have to change. You're talking about um, like on the data the data tag. We have to change. It's actually really a formality. Okay. And it starts with C and craft. Oh, the clearance limit. Yep. So uh, it's not cleared direct. It's not cleared. It's not uh, proceed direct. It's cleared to exactly. Cleared to exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just and like we say in the clearance, cleared to whatever airport. So we're actually changing their clearance limit. You're only cleared to exactly now, right? Yeah. Hold exactly as published. I always like to throw an altitude in there. It's not. 100% required per, you know, the phraseology, whatever. But um, I always like to reinforce it, um, especially if I'm going to be holding multiple people because, yeah. right, you'll want to keep them above 2100 for exactly, right? So mm -hmm. I'm probably going to hold them at four or five or six, right? And then you can descend them in the hold. 
Gotcha. Now, so the um, the charted charted altitudes there is two thousand one hundred to six thousand. Are we limited to that in, if we're having someone hold, or we can stack them higher if we need to? So it's it's your airspace. You can do whatever you want with it, right? Okay. But I think the reason they're at a max of six is if there's props and stuff going to like Mount Vernon, um, mm, they could possibly gotcha. get in the way, right? And it also probably will uh, uh, deal with multiple different Chesapeake controllers. So if you're combining both of those positions, wow. then you really can do whatever you want, right? But yeah, say, let's, let's but, look at where exactly is just okay. on the scope. Just for the okay, yeah, it's way out there. It's it's actually not too far from Easton, right? So, yep. Uh, so say Zachley was full. Mm -hmm. Whiskey twenty nine. They spilled some diesel fuel on the runway. They're out there cleaning it up, right? Mm -hmm. Zachley's full, and you want to hold someone at well, Phillips, right? Okay. How would that hold sound? Uh, well, I'm not sure where Phillips is. Papa, Papa, Mike. Uh, do I, I don't see that on the. Hold on. It's decommissioned, actually, but. Do you have VOR turned on? I do. But I don't see that one. It's up by the. Um, what you call it, base. Oh, okay. Phillips Army Airfield. It's up by Aberdeen. Yeah. Um, we could use Westminster instead. So if uh, you want to okay. hold Westminster, right? Um, okay. how would that How would that hold sound? Uh, hold east of Westminster on the whatever radial, zero nine or zero radial, uh, right turns, one, uh, one minute legs, uh, altitude, expect for the clearance at. Okay. Do you have to tell them right turns? Uh, well, no, the right's the default. So if you don't specify it's right turns. Same thing with the one minute legs, right? Or one and a half minute leg, depending on what they're. True enough. Yeah. speed is right true enough um and their altitude so uh you can kind of leave some of those out right so okay uh what's the first thing we got to do uh well yeah change the clear clearance limit yep. clear, so clear to, to the westminster vur hold now, that westminster hold east of westminster Go okay ahead. Yep, clear to clear to the Westminster. Now, do you give them a route to clear to Westminster VFR via present position present position direct? Or that's usually just do that at implied? the end. Okay. Um, I'm just so, thinking like I'm thinking like craft. You know, the the craft acronym of the route would be the next thing. So this is usually once different. they read it back, then I'll say you can proceed direct Westminster now. You know, okay, or gotcha. expect radar vectors to Westminster or whatever. But. Okay, so we're really issuing the the new clearance first rather than as a control instruction. So it's proceed, yeah, get clear to the Westminster VOR. Uh, hold at Westminster, hold east of Westminster on the zero nine or zero radial. Um, yep. And it altitude. would be really, if he's doing right turns, it would be northeast, right? Uh, sure, right. Okay, okay, got it, right. Because let me just so hold northeast of Westminster uh, on the zero nine zero radial inbound. Yeah, because here's the, here's the, here's the zero nine or zero. So they're holding in this racetrack pattern here got it okay so hold northeast of westminster so like on that. the yep. zero nine or zero radial inbound um maintain six thousand or whatever altitude right mm -hmm. um, we didn't need to specify the terms of the legs expect for the clearance in at you know zero two one five zulu and so why do we tell them expect further clearance? So they can figure out if they got enough uh, fuel. Why else? So they know how long they can take a break out of the cockpit. <laughs> there you go. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that is, it is VATSIM, so we, it's really possible. <laughs> right. No, I'm sorry. What were you going to say? Can I finish my Netflix show? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no Netflix and chill, okay? No Netflix and chill. Uh, what happens if... Uh, what happens if their radio fails? Oh yeah, right. So there's so um, lost comms procedure would be um, in their what they were what they were expected, what they were cleared, and then what they were expected. So they once their EFC expires, they would then proceed back to where they were. They would join um, their last cleared routing. Yeah, exactly. So um, and that's important because we can't leave them up there forever, obviously, right? Yeah, exactly.
Um, so yeah, it's important to give them that, that EFC. And then also they can do their fuel planning, that kind of thing. It right. might be shorter than their EFC, right? So like if, mm -hmm. um, I just cleared someone in and you know, they might take a half an hour, I might give you a 30 minute EFC and then they could cancel in five minutes and say, okay, I'm ready for you. You're cleared, you know, at Westminster right. cleared, whatever approach or at exactly cleared the R and F two eight. Right. Gotcha. Um, so how do you get them out of the hold? Um, we got to reclear them to their new, de their, their, uh, their old destination, right? Yep. So clear to, uh, Bay bridge airport, uh, the present possession, present position, direct, exactly direct, uh, maintain 6,000. Um, and then you don't have to give them a, yeah. And then that should be it. Right. Cause you don't have to give them a, uh, a, a frequency cause they're already on talking to you. You don't have to give them a transponder cause they're already squawking. So yep, exactly. Um, so really just this, this, the C and the R and the A. So a couple different ways if they're already holding exactly right, they're going to be pointed on the, at the inbound course when they hit exactly anyway. So mm -hmm. usually I'll just say clear to the Baybridge airport via at exactly cleared R and F runway two nine approach. Okay. But I'll, it's really okay, so I was I was still on the one that was holding over Westminster. Yeah, so if you're on the one over Westminster, right, you don't want him to go direct to Baybridge. He's going to fly right over Baltimore, right? So uh, yeah. another option you could do there is, you know, um, clear to the Baybridge heading. airport via radar vectors, exactly, uh, then, a, you know, direct turn right heading 090. Gotcha. Um, and then you can just give them direct or, or vectors until um, – you know, you can get them direct exactly, right? Gotcha. Um, okay. Some tools to use at uh, um, these uncontrolled airports. And to, to keep looking at this same approach, what's the minimum required intercept angle if you send them to Zachley? Uh, well, there, if we're RNAV. Required maximum. Gotta, yeah. yeah, hold on. I'm trying to get the, the, uh, Get the approach back up to me. Um, okay. So on the RNAV, I believe that it is uh, 90 degrees, right? We can pretty much clear them direct exactly, you know, pretty much anywhere east, anywhere that way. <laughs> yep. So as long as the uh, angle from them going exactly and then the um, turning on to the final approach course is less than 90 degrees, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and that would be for just about any RNAV, right? Um, right? Exactly has that hold in lieu procedure published, right? Right. Or, okay, or that's true. Know. We can so we so, can really send them direct exactly from anywhere and anywhere. Yep. clear direct. Uh, I mean, yeah, yeah cleared uh, RNAV runway two nine approach. And so, if you did that, you know, from the west, you cleared them exactly, cleared RNAV runway two nine approach. They're it's gonna go that he's to exactly. Do that reversal. Yeah. Yep, they're gonna fly the correct hold entry. They're going to fly one loop in the hold, and then they're going to fly the approach, right? If right. you did have the 90-degree intercept, you could clear them to not fly the hold and loop procedure. And do you know what that is? That sounds like um, Yes, yeah, so that would be proceed direct exactly at exactly cleared uh, straight in RNAV runway 29 approach. Yep, and so that tells them they don't have to do that turn, right? Right, yep. Um, at, if they go to A-guard... Right. See how that's also an, uh, mm -hmm. an IAF. Yep. Uh, so you don't have a hold at a guard, so you'd have to have a 90 degree intercept angle there. Right. So anybody oh, from okay. the North pretty much could go to a guard. Right. And then do you see how, um, the line going to it, you see how it says no PT. Yeah. So they, that they can bank straight onto the approach from there. So if you, I mean, if you no clear procedure. them, yeah. So if you clear them on the approach, let's say they're coming from the North, you, you already got them kind of up over the North end of the Bay. Um, uh, proceed present position direct a guard at a guard cleared RNAV runway 29 or approach at that point you're pretty much expecting them to go you know you don't you, they're not they're going to come straight here they're going to come straight there and they're going to straight in yep exactly um and then of course there's a little op, uh, note there for you can't do that for arrivals from a guard on victor 44 blah blah but yeah, but if they're eastbound, then they're gonna they're they're be coming out at Agard at like a crazy awkward angle anyway. Exactly. Yeah. Um. So you could fix that by doing a couple things. You know, give them a radar vector to the north for a couple of miles till they are within the ninety degrees, and then clear them to Agard, or just send them exactly and let them fly the procedure turn. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. It just depends yeah. on what you want them to right. do, right? 
Right. Um, and then again, it's like efficiency. If you're if you're crazy busy, then just you know you do do what's the fewest number of instructions for you. Your viewers will probably like this. Go to Newburn Echo Whiskey November. Echo Whiskey in November. All right. Hold on one second. I could spell it. <laughs> Coastal Carolina Regional. Yep. All right. Which one am I looking at? The VOR22. Got it. So on that one, a uh, little bit different, right? And Newburn is towered, but only sometimes, right? Okay. Um, and so that's why it says CTAF along with the tower frequency on the top there. Ah, uh, gotcha. Uh, so the VOR22. You're looking at us. Uh, interesting. You're. Uh, that's not the jet chart. That's the actual. Is that the jet chart? This is the uh, FAA one. The FAA. Okay, that's why it looks different. Um, so, what would you expect them to do, or where could you clear them? What What requirements do you have to clear them for this approach? Like, do you have an intercept angle? Um. No, I don't think so. Uh, How would you get them on this approach? Well, it's a uh, New Bern VOR is an initial approach fix, and they're going to fly that procedure turn outbound. So, um, proceed direct across New Bern at or, um, well, it says at, at or below 6,000. So, Cross Newber and Adder below six, which is unusual because it's usually an Adder above there, right? Yep. Um, cross Newber and Adder below six thousand, cleared VOR runway two two approach. Yep, exactly. And so, the pilot is going to go to Newburn. He's going to fly a zero four six heading outbound. Let's see where that's mm -hmm. published. He's going to fly that for ten nautical less, miles from the VOR. Or less, less, less than right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. And then and then he's gonna fly that procedure turn, which means he's gonna turn left to a zero zero one heading. And then he's gonna turn right to a one eight one heading until he intercepts the final approach course, which is the two two six radial inbound, right? Yep. The, the the way I've drawn it on the screen is that those two courses are offset from one another, but they're not really. It's just I didn't want to I wanted for clarity purposes. Yeah, you know, so they're really tracing that same radio outbound and inbound and the hockey stick that i drew wasn't isn't really parallel with the procedure spur but <laughs> imagine if you will that those those angles are all correct yep exactly <laughs> and and so it's important to know right if you're going to use one of these what to expect from the pilot right so mm -hmm. um you can do some things right to help your memory you right. know if report i'm busy at Baltimore, inbound. yeah report the procedure turn inbound report uh, established on the final approach course um you know, any of that kind of stuff, right? Right. What okay. if... Um, right, so actually, let's let's kind of just differentiate there. So report procedure turn inbound would kind of be like here. Report established on final approach course would be kind of like there. Right. I'm sorry, go ahead. And I'll use those as just, you know, a memory aid. I mean, a lot of times, if I'm on center and I'm busy and I'm talking to 62 airplanes, I don't have time to watch you fly the procedure turn. I'm just going to assume yeah. you did it correctly. Call me when you need to go to Unicom. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly, right. Means, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, no traffic observed between you and the airport, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna I, well, there might be some, but I'm not observing know? any. Right. Right. I mean, if there are, tell them, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Two airplanes approved, uh, you know, observed in the traffic pattern over at Newburn. Frequency change to advisor approved. You don't right. care who um, they are. Yeah, they no, I'm making making the joke that if you don't have time to look, you're like, I guess there's no traffic there. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. None that I see, right? Right, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like I said, I didn't observe any. <laughs> um, so so if you already you. had someone on the ground at New Bern and you had another arrival, what hold would you use here? Um, if I had somebody on the ground and I had another arrival. Um, somebody that hadn't canceled IFR yet. Okay, so I have to put them in a hold prior to clearing them for the approach. Well, I guess um, the logical thing would be to have them hold there at uh, Newburgh, but um, Newburgh VOR is also the missed approach. 
uh, fix. So I want to put them at least so the and the missed approach is two thousand. So just to maintain positive separation, I want to give them at least three thousand at Newburn. Yep, exactly. Okay. And um, you can always use the missed approach fix. Just make sure you're not holding them at the same altitude as. Yeah, well. right. And that's what I was. Yeah, that's what I was getting at. If the missed approach altitudes two, then I want to hold. You know, stack the holds starting at three or higher. You answered the question before I asked it. Look at you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, I've done a few of these 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 uh, GAIFR ops before. <laughs> Just a few. Another thing I like to tell you about satellite ops, and this is not like published or whatever. But what I like to do with the satellite um, airplanes, generally they're going to be slower than everybody else going to Baltimore, right? Right. Um, and if not, who cares? Because they're not in my traffic stream, so I need mm -hmm. you to not conflict with everybody else. And right. um, So get them lower than the rest of your traffic. Above mm -hmm. the MVA, but lower than everybody else, right? Gotcha. Um, and I always like to get them direct to the airport. If that means they're, if they're on a star, right, into Baltimore, you know, we just talked about this. You can vector them off, but, you know, leave them on the star, right? Frequently at, so if we go back to Whiskey 29, right? There are no stars for Bay Bridge. Right. Right. So I like to get them just either direct to the field or direct to their first fix if I know what their um, approach is going to be. Mm -hmm. Actually, see, and I'm going on squirrel territory now. What? How do you determine what approach they're going to take? Uh, well, you ask them. <laughs> How does, what does that sound like? Uh, advise when you have the weather at uh, Bay Bridge Airport, say approach request. Exactly. Um, so it's not up to you what a, what runway they take, right? So yeah, let it's them, not control. Let them tell you. So it's, yeah, so that's their choice. So if they come back and say, you know, two two five Bravo Kilo, I want the RNAV two nine. You don't have uh, to stop everything you're doing right now. And look up the RNAV 29 to get them direct yeah. to the fix because you know you, you may have you know like John did to 225 Bravo Kilo in this um, session. He told him stand by and he gave seven other yeah. instructions first that got caught up. And now when I have time, I'm going to go back and say okay. So maybe I'll say okay, proceed to the airport for now. I'll have that. You can expect that. Yep. Then when I have the 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 lull in my traffic, that's when I'm going to use that time to open the chart, see what the fix is, see what altitude I need to give him at. And say okay, you know. Gotcha. Then I would go in and say two two five Bravo Kilo procedure exactly cross exactly at or below six thousand cleared RNAV. You know, reports right. procedure turn inbound or cleared RNAV two nine or whatever it is, right? Yeah. Um, and just take care of it then. So, um, that one's not usually uh, a big priority. Right. Yeah. Because they right there because they're coming from elsewhere in the airspace. They're going to take their time to get there. You know, you, you've put them on a path that's, you know, clear conflict and at an altitude that's clear conflict and, you know, basically just keep going and I'll let you know when I have a minute to deal with you. <laughs> and I used to think, so like when I would have someone come, uh, get on my frequency going somewhere that I'd never heard when I was, you know, fresh on center, the first thing I would do is I'll start to look at the weather there and I'd start pulling up the approaches and I would try to anticipate, you know, I was thinking right. with my pilot brain, which one would I take? You know what I mean? Right. And yeah, exactly. It, and I, I found out quickly that I do all this work and then they want something else. And, <laughs> and it's like, right. okay, sometimes so, it worked and sometimes I got ahead, but like, yeah. you, you don't have to know every approach for every airport. Hey, you can expect that later right. on. I'm going to go figure out what the heck F that means. Right. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> right. But sure, Hopefully. you can have that if you want it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, makes sense. And it just gives you a minute to breathe. So, yeah. Got it. What did I miss, John? Honestly, you got everything, dude. Okay. I'm sure I missed something. No, I, you did more than I was going to do. So, so Rob got his money's worth tonight. Okay, yeah, good. Well, but it, it helps, I think, that I've done so many of those general aviation IFR yes. ops at, yeah. at smaller fields that, you know, at least that much from a pilot standpoint. Like, I now I, I, I say this with a caveat because I found out very quickly in – the very beginnings of S1 training that's like, oh, well, this will be, you know, you know, S1 will be easy because I've, you know, I've been given so many clearances and read them back so many times. Like I already kind of know the phraseology and, and how that all works. So this will be, I'll be able to knock this out in two sessions. And I yep. found that very quickly how wrong I was. <laughs> <laughs> However, at least understanding the... Break. Yes, well, indeed, right. There was a three, uh, three year break from when I started it the first time to when I restarted it, so that contributed to it as well. But, uh, but at least, at least for 
um, for this portion of the lesson material, at least like I don't need a primer on what is the procedure turn? What is a, you know, what is a, uh, a course reversal via hold? So, you know, those things I kind of do already know and, 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 you know, how those, those hold entries work and what the pilot is expected to do and when they're supposed to fly the, you know, the, the reversal and when they're, when they're able to, to do, uh, you know, just, just straight on to final, because at least those things like I've done on the pilot side enough times to know, like that's what we'll be doing. And so, you know, that much, that much I have down at least. Well, and this is usually the time when I'm telling people, you need to go research holds. You need to understand what instructions yeah. you're giving to the pilots. And you've had enough of those already that, uh, so, yeah. So um, at least in that sense. regard, I'm a little bit ahead of the game here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so at least I got one, I got that going for me, which is nice. <laughs> and the thing is, don't get caught up with the satellite guys, you know, like you've been doing with the finals box, right? They're just there for noise. As long as they're already at a safe altitude and they're clear of conflicts and, you're keeping good positive separation. Yeah. They're actually the easier thing. to deal with than everybody else because you clear right. for the approach and they do their own thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't have to sequence or anything. So right. Uh, it makes your life a little bit easier. Gotcha. All right. Very good. We uh, can maybe go over some of that stuff the next time. And I guess we need to kind of figure out when that next time is going to be at this point. So we'll, uh, we'll get, we'll get, get, get with you and, uh, and, and John and, and Dylan on that and, uh, maybe try and get Dylan back in here for a session. He's he punked out on us tonight, so <laughs> <laughs> he's excited too. Uh, well, no, I know, I know that was an unforeseeable work situation because I know I've been in I've been in that same exact scenario, and I know how that just like just torpedoes the rest of your day when something like that happens. So, um, anyway, so that's uh, that's good. I think we've got a good, um. You know, good kind of uh, direction to go in, but uh, for sure for me, it's going to be about just being able to start rattling off these instructions without having to think about them. So this watching this session back, and you know, again, I was already starting starting to kind of anticipate what moves John was going to make next. Although he did surprise me a couple times with, you know, with stuff that was way easier than I was going to do. But again, you know, watching it back a sec second and third time and knowing what's coming and just being able to say it right along, it will uh, will hopefully help me get up to speed with, um, you know, with with being able to translate my thought and my picture onto the uh, onto the screen onto the scope. So, I think that's where I will have to have to get my my practice in and come back to you when I'm ready to kind of do it a little bit faster pace. And I think that's um you know that's that's good homework. That that's a big thing is just yeah. getting it um getting it said. So um I know you're frequently very busy at work, but if you ever have chance like listen to Chesapeake on live ATC, you know, tune from the office or, yeah. or whatever and just um you know listen to some of the instructions they're giving. I learned I, I've learned a lot from you know just monitoring the real guys. So yeah, yeah, and there's that very, very good uh, YouTube video that you linked me to, um, that maybe we can put into the uh, the stream chat. Do you happen to have that handy? Yeah, I can get it. Yeah, and just throw that into the the, the live stream chat if you would. Uh, very, very good video. And while while you're hunting it down, I'll describe it. A very, very good video uh, on YouTube that is based on the actual um, uh, BWI approach or, or yeah, Potomac approach, uh, Chesapeake sector. And uh, and just watching the controller work that scope, and I think it centers on the the, the, the finals box. I don't think it's it's as, as obviously it's not the entire Chesapeake sector, uh, but centers on that finals box and how they kind of construct and sequence those um, those aircraft coming into the in, in, onto the final approach, and then I, even in part of that uh, video is the. Um, is the is the flip flop of the airspace? So they go from west slow to east slow, or east slow to west slow. I forget which one it is, but they do flip the airspace around during the video, and you can kind of see that process of how they, um, you know, they kind of vector everyone away, and then you know get the, the airspace resituated, and then and then they start everyone in the opposite flow, and uh, how really cool that kind of is. So I think that's the correct link there that we just put into the. Whoops! Now you're hearing the ad blaring through the stream. Oh, I'm sorry, I put that. it in there twice. Sorry, sorry. That's Robert. okay. No, I, I, oh, it is a vast aviation video, so there it is. Um, change of configuration included. So, so that'd be a great go. idea for an OTS, John. If we could do a change of operations, that would just be 
I <laughs> that is genius, actually. <laughs> there you go. But that's uh, so that's that's that, and that's a, that was a, a great one to check out, and maybe maybe another maybe do, maybe I'm due for another watch of that one, just again to anticipate and you know be be ready to kind of rattle off those instructions as they come. So never hurts to go back to some of those resources because as you learn radar stuff, your more of the Chesapeake stuff is going to make sense. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So. Exactly. All right. Well, thanks again, guys, for all of the patience, especially, you know, as I was really kind of I kind of hit a brick wall tonight. So I, I apologize uh, <laughs> for for that over again. But I, apologies. But but you guys are uh, are just a, f- a fantastic training team to be able to just kind of take that situation and say, well, what's what can we do that's worth the instructional time? And, and, and John, like I said, really just watching you solve the puzzle, you know, like you've uh, you, you've talked about in previous streams, just watching you solve the puzzle and the. The, uh, the different approaches that you used to, uh, you know, to adjust sequencing or, or reevaluate your plan or, or um, you know, or, or, or slot somebody back out and back in. Um, it was really interesting. It was, it was uh, impressive to watch your brain work as the, as the scenario <laughs> unfolded. So well, thank, thank you very much for that. I hope that the thank stream you, viewers enjoyed, uh, enjoyed that as well. Um, all right. Well, that's going to wrap it up. Stream viewers. Sorry. Props to the stream viewers for sticking around during... Uh, talking about holds and un- uncontrolled <laughs> that was boring and everybody stayed so <laughs> yeah no well no exactly i think uh there's a lot of really uh in intense interest in how this process works and what uh folks that are looking to to potentially you know do vat sim air traffic control e- even if they're if they're already up to the s2 level and and working toward that next step or if they're just even you know, considering getting into the process from the beginning, you know, at some point, this is the kind of thing that you'll progress to. And it probably seems a little overwhelming at first, but once you get to the level where, you know, you get comfortable with the the building blocks of the, you know, the, the delivery and how the routing works, and then you work on ground control and, you know, and you start with the very basics of positive control, right? You, you, you learn as early as ground, you know, not to clear two aircraft at the same intersection. You know, and uh, and how to how to how to manage a ground flow without uh, putting two aircraft together, and you know, issuing one the, the continuous you know continue taxi and the other one to hold short where they're where they're merging and, and that sort of thing. So it's, these concepts really start at that level, and then you just apply them um, as you go higher and higher through the hierarchy. So. Um, well, imagine putting it all together for center when you yeah, get the center. <laughs> indeed, yeah, right. So, and I've heard that. Um, you know, I've heard that kind of described as like, I, and I've, I've, I've heard more than one, one person say that this leap from S2 to S3 probably is the most challenging one. It and is. that once you go from S3 to center, it's really like, well, it's just a big tracon, basically. You it know? is. So, and that's what I've heard that's described that way multiple times. So this is the really, this is the toughest one. And that's why I am as frustrated as I was tonight. I'm, I'm cutting myself some slack because I know that this is the, uh, you know, this is probably the most challenging leap that I'll take in my uh, my vet simulator traffic control career. So uh, I'm allowing myself a little extra time to get there. So, uh, but thank you guys for your patience, like I said, and uh, and continuing to work with us and having a, having a really good time doing it. I've always uh, I've enjoyed each of these uh, training sessions just from the standpoint of just getting to hang out and talk with you guys for a couple hours. So <laughs> <laughs> we feel the same way. We feel exactly the same way. Yeah, very really good. This is something we look forward to. Believe us. Yep, good. All right, well, we'll close up shop, and uh, I'll get back with you guys uh, real soon to uh, figure out when we're doing it next, okay? Yep, awesome. All right, guys, once again, uh, Jared West, the air traffic manager of the Washington ARTCC and the uh, and the deputy air traffic manager, uh, Jay Bartlett. So thank you guys again, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you next time. Thank That's you. That's good. All right, well, let's go ahead and close that up, and then let's... Uh, talk about what's coming up next on the stream so guys again guys tonight uh apologies for those of you who were into the chat uh, i think most of you were pretty respectful of the idea uh, especially if you've seen a few of these before pretty respectful of the idea that i wasn't going to be able to uh, interact a whole lot with you uh tonight as this lesson went on although uh i was a, I was a little bit more of an observer earlier than uh than an active participant um, but you know again just trying to keep up with what was going on on the screen and and understanding what uh you know what John's priorities were 
as the scenario unfolded and, and trying to anticipate not only which aircraft he needed to talk to most presciently, but uh, what he was going to do with him once uh, once he did. So, um, so yeah, it wasn't a lot of opportunity for me to interact with the chat, but thank you guys for all being very respectful of that. And of course, the, the giant yellow warning across the bottom of the screen maybe helped with that as well. What we normally do on this channel, if you happen to be new with us tonight, what we normally do on this channel is uh, general aviation IFR flying, focusing on those old radio-based navigation techniques, which is uh, VOR radial tracking and um, NDB bearings and the analog ILS um, approaches with the, uh, the just the uh, just the deflection needles, you know, not uh, a whole lot of flying with flight management computers and uh, and GPSs. You know, it's really showing how to do the navigation the old school way. We also do a fair amount of uh, VFR flying now that we have a sim. Uh, we have a couple of sims now, X Plane Eleven, uh, particularly with Ortho scenery, uh, but uh, that flight sim twenty twenty with just its native default scenery that really allows you uh, almost all of the visual references that you would find on a chart if you were navigating visually. So we are really starting to do a lot more uh, VFR flying and, and really VFR flying I, I, that I've done a fair amount of even uh, previously, but uh, by cheating, by, by looking at VOR, um, you know, point bearing distance references and figuring out where I was, you know, based on radio based navigation, which is really great tool. You know, but really when you're flying VFR, you, you're supposed to be navigating by what you're seeing out the window. So we've been doing a lot more of that as well. Coming up on the stream on Wednesday, uh, you might want to uh, you might want to check that one out. We tried a couple of weeks ago to get that Wing 42 Boeing 247D up and running on flights in 2020. We had kind of a frustrating night that night too. Um, but we've got... The controls kind of all set up now and, and assigned properly through FSU IPC, at least the levers, not, not all of the little buttons and switches and knobs and such, but at least the levers are now properly assigned to the uh, to my, uh, my Logitech um, throttle quadrants. And so we should be able to get that Boeing 247D up and running and uh, maybe take it for a couple patterns or a, a short hop. Uh, as we uh, get that thing airborne and, and tr do our best not to fry an engine. It's one of those really old um, uh, twin radial engine aircraft, kind of the predecessor uh, to the DC-3, or it's a, it's a smaller twin. It's actually kind of more along the size of a, uh, like maybe a Lockheed Electra. Um, but yeah, really, really robust simulation from Wing 42 of that Boeing 247D where you have to baby those radials engine, radial engines and manage them super, super carefully or they will, uh, things will go awry and those things are known to burst into flames and we'll see if we, uh, we'll see how many engines, maybe we'll do an over under maybe at the beginning of the stream and of, 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 a, of a fried engine count. That'll be on Wednesday. We get that started at 7 p.m. Eastern time, 2300 Zulu time. Then Friday night is an air traffic control stream where we'll be working as a tower controller. So at least we're getting back to some air traffic control that I maybe kind of feel like I know how to do a little bit. Uh, we'll be working Norfolk Tower, which is not a tower that we work very frequently on the channel. It's a class Charlie field down there at the bottom of the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, but it is one of the featured fields in the Light Up the East Coast Friday Night Ops event. We're partnering with all of our ARTCCs down to the south of us and featuring a lot of the smaller fields, a lot of fields that aren't normally featured in FNOs, uh, speaking of, you know, Charlie's and even a couple of Deltas. So we'll be working Norfolk Tower. I just tonight picked up the vertical sim uh, Norfolk for X-Plane 11. So that'll be our tower view. And I did get it set up in V-Stars. Uh, with the facilities, uh, the facility configuration all set up and ready to go. So we'll be ready to work Norfolk Tower with that vertical sim scenery for x Plane 11 as our tower view, and that'll be our position on Friday. The full show schedule is published for you down there underneath the About tab, and then it's also on our Discord server. The link for the Discord right there at the bottom of your screen. And, you know, again, like I said, it wasn't terribly interactive with the chat tonight, but if you did have questions... Uh, or just wanted to pop in and say hi, go ahead and join us over on that Discord, and uh, I, I pretty much monitor that 24-7. Um, at least I check in on it every couple of hours when I'm not streaming. So any questions or thoughts that you had about tonight's, um, tonight's uh, air traffic control lesson or anything else that you wanted to say, uh, feel free to jump in over on that Discord server. It's a great way to reach out. Uh, slightly to the left of that, you've got our, our Twitter information there. 
whenever the uh, show needs the uh, show schedule needs to change last minute or if there's any kind of breaking news in the flight simulation community or, or the VATSIM community, we try to let you know on our Twitter feed over there. We've also got an announcements channel back on that Discord that we were just mentioning. But follow us on Twitter if you want to be uh, kept abreast of any of those you know, kind of breaking news situations in the sim world or the VATSIM world. Or if you just want to know what's, uh, what's coming up on the stream or if there's any changes to the schedule, like the hour, uh, one hour delay tonight. You know, we were, That's a, a great way to... Uh, to keep on top of that and not wonder what what happened to me and make you know if I don't come out at seven you can check that check on that and see if there's something going on. Last but not least is our YouTube link over on the lower left hand side of your screen and that's where we archive all of our old flight broadcasts so you can check out if we've ever done a certain type of approach or flown into your favorite airport or flown your favorite type of aircraft you can check through all of our old flights there. But. Uh, even more so than that, we've got a series of VATSIM tutorials. So if you're considering getting onto the VATSIM network and you aren't sure what to say to controllers, we've got a tutorial over there that kind of gives you the basics. If you want to know how to put a route together, either a VFR route plan or an IFR route, we've got some, uh, you know, some resources over there to help you out and, uh, and things like that. So please feel free to check those out. Again, if you have questions on any of that stuff, feel free to leave those right there in the comments on, on those videos or, again, over on our Discord server. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up, guys. Again, uh, thanks so much to the training team and the leadership team at the Washington ARTCC. I'm going to go ahead and send you over to uh, one of our favorite flight sim streamers that we don't get a chance to raid too often, and that is our friend... Melvin Leroy, he is, oh, he's just wrapped up. Well, we got another one, actually two of them that we haven't had a chance to raid in a long, long time. So I'm going to go ahead and send you over then to our backup plan. Our backup plan will be Mr. Sim Caesar, and he is still airborne, so he's got a little flying left to do. It looks like he's in the 737. I can't quite tell which Sim he is in, but he does appear to be in a 737. So we will go ahead and send you over to him and uh, hope that you enjoy the rest of his flight. Tell him that Slant Alpha sends his love. And, of course, I'll probably pop in and, and harass him for a little bit myself, too, while we are there. So we will send you over to uh, to that shortly. It looks like it might be the Zemo mod for seven uh, for the X-Plane 11, but uh, so it definitely appears to be a 737 for sure. So uh, we'll send you over to him and uh, hope that you guys will enjoy the rest of the beginning of your week we will see you on wednesday then from the cockpit of that boeing 247 d as we uh, do our best not to set it on fire uh, but have a great rest of the beginning of your week we'll, uh, we'll see you then be healthy and safe in your own adventures in the meantime guys take care Bacon. Oh my goodness.